today's awareness come training on ISO 17025 2017, which is a requirement for all industries, laboratories, and the institutions to make their standard and the quality. This is a very good training program and awareness for all to have a good capacity building of the country. We have with us Shri Vinit Mathur Saab, our chief guest, who is the joint secretary in the Department of Consumer Affairs. Basically, he is an Indian Postal Service Officer of 1994 batch. He is Bachelor of Engineering in Electronics and Communication from Manipal Institute of Technology. He has MBA. He has from RA Podar Institute of Management, University of Rajasthan. He is Master of Public Affairs from USA. He is Joint Secretary in our department since 2020. He has earlier served as DDG, Ministry of Communications, Postmaster General Vadodara, Gujarat, Commissioner for Department Inquiries, CVC, etc. He has interest in cyber frauds, consumer laws, electronic control systems, and economics. Sir, I know you very well since last two years, and uh, we have worked very well during the COVID time and others. You are always a uh, shining light for us to develop the capacity building the country. So in the, under your kind guidance, we are trying our best to have a good country. We have very good eminent speakers, not only from India, but from USA also. And sir, certainly our country, our, our officer, our persons, our, our people will be benefited from these two days programs. Sir, I would like to request you to kindly inaugurate the conference. Please, sir, Mathur, sir, please. Yeah, good morning, uh, all the participants uh, and distinguished guests. Good morning, uh, Ashutosh ji. I am indeed delighted to be part of uh, this national workshop and seminar on ISO 17025 standard, which is an extremely important standard for any industry to follow and for the economy and industry in the country. Now, the standards, uh, as has been mentioned, are the keystone for any economic or industrial activity in the country. And therefore, it is important that uh, to be internationally harmonized and internationally presentable for our uh, products and services, we should be adhering to the national and international standards. As you all know, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister and the current government has an ambitious program of making this country a $30 trillion economy by 2047. Uh, as has been mentioned by our Honorable Prime Minister, from 2022, 21-22, to 2047 is the Amrit Kal. Now, during the Amrit Kal, it has been envisaged that India will leapfrog and its economy is going to jump many multiple folds and we'll be probably one of the best producing and utilizing countries of uh, products, services and materials. To harmonize our uh, products for exports across the world and to make their acceptance more uh, uh, you know, utilitarian and acceptable across the world, we need to follow the international standards. One of the important issues for manufacturing industries, for people who are in legal metrology or testing of materials and products and services is adherence to 17025. And this is an extremely apt workshop and a seminar program for two days, which uh, my colleague, Mr. Ashutosh Agarwal is steering and has taken the initiative to bring the industry and various experts from NPL, industry, and internationally to this particular domain. Let me flag some of the important issues of the legal metrology and uh, the progress which uh, probably the Department of Consumer Affairs and this government has taken. We have uh, made large number of uh, online applications now possible through which uh, the companies can uh, submit their information for a faster end-to-end -end processing of their applications for products and their uh, approvals through the Department of Consumer Affairs. 
there's an online system which is available. It is extremely important. I would suggest that a large number of new models for weighing scales or any other measuring instruments which are being brought into India, either through import or are being domestically produced, uh, you may use the Department of Consumer Affairs website and information kiosk. We have the Regional Reference Standards Laboratory, Ahmedabad being one of them, which is being headed by our friend Ashutosh Agarwal, who are extremely keen to bring down the, take down the message क्योंकि मैसेज को ग्रामीण क्षेत्रों तक हम ले जाना चाहते हैं हमारे साथ राज्य सरकारों को भी साथ लेके जो हमारे मेजरमेंट्स वेट्स एंड मेजर्स के कार्य प्रणाली है उसके स्टैंडर्ड्स हैं जिस प्रकार से कैलिब्रेशन होना चाहिए इक्विपमेंट का विभिन्न प्रकार का इक्विपमेंट देश की इंडस्ट्री में प्रोड्यूस होता है इम्पोर्ट होता है कुछ एग्जाम्पल आपने देखे होंगे कोविड काल में हमने देखा कि बहुत सारी ऑक्सीजन कॉन्सेंट्रेटर मशीन्स बहुत सारे अनर फार्मास्यूटिकल इश्यूज बहुत सारे मास्क सैनिटाइजर आदि का उत्पादन बढ़ता गया पीपीपी किट्स का बढ़ता गया इसके अलावा मेजरिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स जैसे ऑक्सीजन मीटर्स जो हैं कि कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इन ब्लड इन सारी चीजों का बहुत ज्यादा आयात होने लगा देश में क्योंकि इनकी रिक्वायरमेंट अत्यंत बढ़ती गई कुछ डोमेस्टिक इंडस्ट्री को इस क्षेत्र में जोड़ा जाए तो मेरी सोच ये है कि बहुत अच्छा कार्य हो सकता है हम लोग लीडर्स हैं फार्मेसी में और हम मेडिकल इक्विपमेंट एंड इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स एंड मेजरिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स में खास तौर पर भी, भी लीडर हो सकते हैं हमारी मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इंडस्ट्री यदि स्टैंडर्ड्स को जो कि इस पर्टिकुलर वर्कशॉप में काफी डिटेल में हमारे एक्सपर्ट्स लोग बताएंगे और हमारी इंडस्ट्री को या हमारे जो उसके मैनेजर्स हैं उनको सहायतार्थ होगा कि किस प्रकार के प्रोसेसेस को हमें अडॉप्ट करना चाहिए और आगे हमारी इंडस्ट्री को अलाइन करना चाहिए जिसके कि हम इंटरनेशनल कंपटीशन को मीट कर पाए और अधिक से अधिक उत्पाद हमारा इंटरनेशनली एक्सेप्टेबल हो और वो बाहर हम एक्सपोर्ट कर पाए थर्टी ट्रिलियन डॉलर की इकॉनमी बनाने के लिए जो बेंच है साइंटिफिक इंडस्ट्री ही हो सकती है जिस देश में साइंस और मैथ्स uh, की तरक्की है कंप्यूटिंग साइंस की तरक्की है और अन्य अप्लाइड बहुत सारे फिजिक्स वगैरह के विषय हैं टाइम डेसिमिनेशन की एक बहुत बड़ा कार्य हमारा विभाग कर रहा है जिसकी की बहुत बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंस है अहमियत है आज बड़े बड़े जो हमारे कंप्यूटराइज सिस्टम्स हैं और डिफेंस के और स्ट्रेटेजिक इक्विपमेंट हैं वो बहुत ही नैनो सेकेंड्स की क्वालिटी का टाइम की आवश्यकता उनमें होती है आप लोग ऑल इंडिया रेडियो और बाकी जगहों से भी टाइम लेते हैं तो टाइम का मेजरमेंट और टाइम की नैनो सेकंड्स तक की रेलेवेंस अत्यंत ही उपयोगी है किसी भी देश या इकोनॉमी के लिए आगे बढ़ने के लिए सो आई थिंक द इंडियन इकोनॉमी इज लीप फ्रॉकिंग देर इज गोइंग टू बी अमृत काल द गवर्नमेंट इज सपोर्टिव इनफ for the industry to come forward adapt to newer applications and technologies and therefore importance of world standards and harmonization of indian standards and indian manufacturing becomes extremely important so i think there is lot to be done we have a huge country where there are a lot of measuring instruments being used every petrol pump is moved from analog to digital petrol dispensing machinery the measurements and the calibrations become important there are all consumers domestic as well as industrial consumers have large number of meters uh, for measuring public utilities whether be it water or gas electricity or any of those public utility services large number of meters are manufactured in the country and every meter makes use of measurements and therefore their calibration and quality should be of international standards india being a country of diverse geographical domains and climatic conditions our manufacturing becomes uh, multifold challengeable for our industry jo ki 50 60 degree ke tapman mein bhi aapka meter या कैलिब्रेशन उसका इंस्ट्रूमेंट का उपयोगी रूप से काम कामयाब रहे और माइनस तीस डिग्री का भी तापमान यहाँ पर है जहाँ हमारे सैनिक साइचिन ग्लेशियर पे जाते हैं 
और वो बहुत सारे मेजरिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स का इस्तेमाल करते हैं कोई क्रेविस है कोई और है आपको खाई को पार करना है और उसमें भी हमारे जो मेजरिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स हैं लीगल मेट्रोलॉजी का काम आता है उसके साथ साथ उनके पास बंदूकें मशीनें डिफेंस इक्विपमेंट होता है जो कि टाइम के साथ अलाइंड होता है और उसकी इम्पोर्टेंस उनके कमांड एंड कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स में एक विषय कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स की बात आई इन्होंने बताया अभी मेरा खास तौर पे उसमें बहुत इंटरेस्ट है सो बी इट बार इंडस्ट्री बी इट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इंडस्ट्री बी इट रोड एंड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बी इट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स विच आर बीइंग मेजर्ड यूज्ड एंड प्रोड्यूस्ड इन द कंट्री इट बिकम्स एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट दैट आर सोसाइटी एंड आर यंगस्टर्स अंडरस्टैंड दैट क्या इंपॉर्टेंस है मेजरमेंट्स और स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन की कोई भी देश के लिए आगे बढ़ने के लिए ये खास तौर पर बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है इसका दूसरा भाग जो है जो कि हमारी आर आर एस एल्स हैं नेशनल टेस्ट हाउस हैं और प्राइवेट सेक्टर में लेबोरेटरीज हैं वो स्टैंडर्ड्स को मेजर करती हैं जो हमारी इंडस्ट्री कोई भी सामान बनाती है उसमें क्या उसकी क्वालिटी है और किस प्रकार से वो इंस्ट्रूमेंट पास या फेल होते हैं जिससे कि इंटरनेशनली उनकी एक्सेप्टेंस बढ़ेगी डोमेस्टिकली भी बढ़ेगी डोमेस्टिक इंडस्ट्री में बहुत सारा मार्केट है परंतु मैं ये आग्रह करना चाहूंगा सभी यंग लोगों से या इंडस्ट्री से आईएसआई मार्किंग की जहां जहां मैंडेटरी है वो प्रोडक्शन जो किया जा रहा है उन आइटम्स पे आप जरूर बी का सर्टिफिकेशन लेने की कोशिश करें इंटरनेशनली भी जो इम्पोर्ट हो रही है वो सर्टिफिकेशन स्कीम्स हैं इलेक्ट्रॉनिक आइटम्स हैं जो कि हम मोबाइल फोन्स वगैरह इस्तेमाल करते हैं वहां भी जो वर्ल्ड स्टैंडर्ड्स के इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स हैं उनका इस्तेमाल करना आवश्यक है सो आई थिंक द करंट प्रोग्राम या जो दो दिन का ये ट्रेनिंग एंड वर्कशॉप है सेमिनार है ये बहुत ही एप्ट है आई थिंक इंडस्ट्री को इस बारे में बहुत अच्छी जानकारी हमारे एक्सपर्ट्स के साथ प्राप्त होगी एंड वी विल बी एबल टू लीप फ्रॉग इन आर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इन आर मेजरिंग इन आर कैलिब्रेशन एंड इन आर प्रोडक्शन देश को निश्चित रूप से आप लोगों की सहायता के साथ हम आने वाले कुछ ही वर्षों में आ, मेरे को लगता है दो तक की वेट नहीं करना पड़ेगा 30 ट्रिलियन डॉलर की इकोनॉमी जो है और हमारा जो सपना है कि इस देश में सभी के पास एक अच्छा लिविंग स्टैंडर्ड हो उसका पूरा जो बेंचमार्क है या रॉक रॉक की तरह हमारी इंडस्ट्री और इकोनॉमी उसके पीछे है तो आप साथियों की आवश्यकता है लीगल मेट्रोलॉजी उसका सपोर्ट करेगा वेट्स एंड मेजर्स उनके कैलिब्रेशन उनका सपोर्ट हमारा रीजनल रूरल स्टैंडर्ड्स लेबोरेटरी आपकी निश्चित रूप से सहायता करते रहेंगे और इस प्रकार के कार्यक्रम होते रहेंगे हम ग्राउंड पे फील्ड लेवल में भी आपके साथ आ, रोजमर्रा में इंटरेक्शन रखना चाहते हैं हमें समझ में आना चाहिए कि किस प्रकार की हमारे स्टेक होल्डर्स को इंडस्ट्री को आ, क्या चैलेंज आ रहा है और उन्होंने क्या काम बढ़िया किया है जो हम इंटरनेशनली उसको रिकग्नाइज करवा पाए और आगे इंडिया को फ्री ट्रेड एग्रीमेंट्स जो हो रहे हैं इस समय चाहे हमने ऑस्ट्रेलिया के साथ किया हो यू के साथ किया गया हो और तेजी से ये फ्री ट्रेड अग्रीमेंट्स बढ़ने वाले हैं उसका सारा दारोमदार जो है हमारी इंडस्ट्री पर डिपेंडेंट है मैं आशा करता हूं कि ये बहुत अच्छा वर्कशॉप रहेगा और आई एम आई विल बी आल्सो बेनिफिटेड बाय द एक्सपर्ट व्यूज एंड कमेंट्स व्हिच विल फॉलो इन दिस टू डेज एंड वी विल सर्टनली टेक फॉरवर्ड योर मैसेज राइट अप टू द लास्ट मैन एंड द लास्ट इंडस्ट्री इन द कंट्री with these words i thank everyone i thank rrsl amdabad and my team from department of consumer affairs for organizing this bringing a uh, lot of industry and other stakeholders together and i wish uh, complete success to, to these two days workshop and seminar thank you very much Thank you very much, sir, for your kind words. We are always thankful to you for your motivated and kind words. Certainly, we will try our best to help the industry, to help the society, so that we also have 
our life work life balance in the country and a greater life as we are observing outside the country i remember as one day, one day uh, nitin gadkari sahab was saying that america is uh, uh, the great due to its road Roads, roads are not great um, due to the America, but the America is great due to its great roads. So similarly, we are working on the great roads. We are trying to build the great roads in the country, not only in this uh, on the roads, but to the society, to the scientific society, technologically. We are working hard. Thank you very much, sir. We are always to, looking towards you for your kind support. Thank you, sir. Sir, thank now you. I will request. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, we have with us Professor R K Kotnala. I think everybody knows this. He is an eminent scientist. From the National Physical Laboratory, he is the chairman of NABL, and uh, basically, he, right now he is the he is having the prestigious Atomic Energy Raja Ramana Fellowship. He is a globally highly accumulated scientist by accomplishing many first for India and globally. He is he has basically developed some tempering pro, tempering fraudulent practices to stop in the energy meters in 2001 from magnetic field ACDC influence. And he during COVID-19, we are very well aware that this uh, under his leadership, NABL has done a very great job at developing this large number of uh, testing, RT-PCR testing laboratories. Thank you, sir. We are thankful to you for having this technology in the country. And after that, we are having one another very important thing. On the top. Anyway, so I'm sorry, sir, and uh, I think there was some interruption. I'm audible. Yes, yes, you are audible, Ashutosh. Sir, uh, yes, he, has, yes, he has done a lot of work due to his continued, consistent, and sustainable innovative efforts towards science led to the 21st century biggest invention in green energy of hydroelectric cell. Recently, I got an opportunity to see his laboratory at National Physical Laboratory where he has developed the hydroelectric cell. And certainly it is a Nobel Prize work. We, will, we are expecting that certainly he will, this particular innovation will lead him towards the Nobel Prize. Sir, we are thankful to you for helping us in this particular seminar. And uh, we expect, I cannot read your, you have done a lot of uh, patents, a lot of research papers, PhDs, etc. Now, uh, Professor Kutnarasap, kindly, sir, just give us the direction how we can move further. Professor Kutnarasap, please. Sir, you have your mic off, please. I'm sorry, right. Is it okay? Are you able to hear me? Yes, we are able to hear you, sir. Sir, yeah. oh, it's okay. Please, sir, please. Uh, Mr. Asutosh uh, Agrawal, thank you very much for your kind words and uh, this invitation. And I'm especially, yes, sir. Please, sir. especially happy to uh, hear the uh, chief guest, Mr. Vineet Mathur's views that how you uh, Consumer Affairs Ministry has to uh, move and what we are going to do in your um, legal meteorology. So that is a uh, very interesting and he has given a very good um, outlines. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Yes, please. Okay, right. Uh, and I good um, wish all good morning and uh, especially thankful to Mr. Uh, Vinit Mathur, Dr. Dikshit um, from the Legal Meteorology and Mr. Asutosh Agrawal, industries, lab representatives, to all other distinguished experts who are going to deliberate to industries and the labs, what we have to exactly do uh, in quality system that to ISO 17025. Uh, we all know for a Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan to achieve immediate $5 trillion economy is a very challenging and strategic situation for industries scientists and engineers. 
already uh, our chief guest has spoken about our the big goal of the prime minister that how we have to go for the 50 tri uh, trillion 30 trillion dollar um, economy but the immediate requirement is the 5 trillion dollar economy and I, we know very well in the indian industry is to adopt quality standards and testing at par with international standards to enhance export so that 5 trillion economy can be immediately achieved. This is what we think here. During the last year, NABL and Department of Legal Meteorology on weight, length, volume, took a historical step to approve private labs to do testing all over the India besides the state level legal meteorology labs because already these legal like RSL where, where this today is the platform they all were serving but the those those special efforts were focused mainly to spread quality to a common man because what is happening with the time we have to increase the scope of uh, our quality infrastructure and therefore there is a need of more laboratories and therefore the NABL and Department of Legal Meteorology uh, put forward the, this new idea that there must be our laboratory which are said to be the government approved test centers who have already taken accreditation from the NABL labs. So that is a first start. I, I hope that the uh, in future there will be scope will be further improved upon and it will be widened uh, so that each and every our country citizen can avail quality products and services. It was possible due to a support of the secretary, additional secretary, Ministry of Consumer Affairs, QCI chairman and NABL chairman, uh, means presently I'm here, and joint secretary, Dr. Dikshit, Mr. Asutosh uh, Agrawal, and Mr. Bhattal Singh and others have worked very hard to make this possible and this one of the workshop is in that direction only that it will help us that how we can go to each and every man of the our country that they get the quality product. So next question immediately comes why do we need quality products services answer is simple it benefits in terms of product quality reliability total cost of ownership interoperability compatibility and few other more uh, benefits hence quality standards can be accomplished easily through a well-defined system that is ISO 17025 series and on this there have been a, a special effort from Ministry of Consumer Affairs uh, and their um, all the staff officers who are involved into it. I will cite one example how Indian rice export was banned by European Union in July 2017. So when we said 2017, our rice export was immediately banned as it was not meeting quality standards of European Union. It resulted into a huge loss of foreign exchange. If that has happened, even today, rice export from India is 21 million ton. It's a huge quantity. And if we look at 
agriculture export is set to cross 50 billion US dollar. So it's a, not only other part, it's a only agriculture. There is a lot of electricals, then the uh, machinery, then there are the other items which I am not uh, taken up, but a, one of the example makes us alert that the why not to have a good quality system, whether it matches with the European Union or it matches with the USA um, or it matches with the British standard, means all should be unification. And in that case, ISO 17025 is one of the very popular and important um, uh, standard quality system that QMS we have to follow it up. Therefore, I urge industries and labs to follow strictly quality standards in all spheres of the life. Uh, this what RRSL Ahmedabad lab is providing you as a one of the platform on ISO 17025 uh, learning. It's not a learning, I'll say the, even the review uh, for or the reminding uh, industry people and others who are not, you know, not in touch for a long time. So they can be benefited and others will strengthen it further. And as far as the uh, NABL is concerned on that behalf, and I can definitely assure all the industries uh, and labs that there should not be any kind of hindrance, any kind of a problems for you to move ahead, to go ahead for the any kind of a quality system. You may be aware of it that I have been trying a lot of efforts I have been doing and Mr. Astos Agrawal has already spoken that even during the COVID-19, it's, uh, you know, not hidden from anybody that the if the testing is not done, you may not go ahead. Testing, detection, and then finally diagnosing. And for that matter, we could, NABL could produce a lot of accreditations for the new labs who will go for the RT PCR test and PP kits. So it was a really tough and difficult time, but it could be done. Everybody knows. And that's a, the one benefit directly uh, for, based on the quality system for the public. And the next we are expecting, which is a long term, which we have been working and still we can go ahead. That is that we will follow the ISO 17025 standards as a quality standard for our uh, legal meteorological parameters. And this here, I would like to thank all of you and the participants and as well as the our uh, Department of Legal Meteorology. Dr. Dixit, Mr. Astush Agrawal, and Joint Secretary and Secretary, and thank you. I wish all the best. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for your kind words and uh, motivational given to us. Certainly, sir, we will do our best to develop other country, good laboratories in the country. Sir, you are very well correct. I was just in last week on Tuesday, I was in uh, Vishakhapatnam, Vishakhapatnam uh, during this AMTZ meeting, AMTZ conference, and what uh, I was learned from there, they say that uh, earlier it was made for India, then make in India, then made in India, and now we have to say originated in India. So yes. we have we are working actually now towards to originate in India, and certainly with this uh, visionful and the positive government, we will certainly get it done. And now I I am observing in every sphere of life that there is there is a positive signals positive vibrations in the government as well as in the private industries we are having good people like you mathur sahab our teacher secretary madam director sahab and sir it is uh, it is basically the fortunate of the country that now the country is in the good hands thank you very much sir thank you so now i will request our beloved director sahab shri bn tishi sahab this is is very well known in the legal methodology since last many years He's the director and he has done a lot for the country to develop the legal methodology system in the country all the state governments he has helped in developing their laboratories in providing them standard equipments and being in rsl ahmedabad i since last one year i'm in ahmedabad i am observing how 
uh, we have worked since last 10 years in the legal medicine department in Delhi. Certainly, sir, we are doing it. Sir, this is, sir, I will request you to kindly speak two words uh, for the motivation of our participants, which will continue this long term seminar for eight hours since now to tomorrow, four, uh, tomorrow, 4 15 hours. Please, sir, this is, sir, please. Sir, up the mic off. Sir, up, yes, this is sir. Up the mic off, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Please, sir. Please. Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. We are. You are audible, sir. Please. I am audible. Yes, sir. You are audible. Please. So, uh, respected uh, Mathur Sahab, respected Ko uh, Kotnala Sahab, um. मेरे प्रिय मित्र और डिप्टी डायरेक्टर श्री आशुतोष अग्रवाल जी प्रोग्राम के ऑर्गेनाइजर्स हैं आप सभी को बहुत-बहुत बधाई है कि आशुतोष जी ने इसमें लीड लिया है कि 17025 में अधिक से अधिक जो है कम्युनिकेशंस इंडस्ट्रीज और लैबोरेटरीज के साथ किया जाएगा जिससे कि जिन लोगों को इसके इंपॉर्टेंस की जानकारी नहीं है उनको भी इसकी जानकारी हो जाए और साथ ही साथ जो इस फील्ड में जुड़े हैं वो ये समझ लें कि मतलब यदि कोई गैप है तो उस गैप को दूर कर लें तो कम्युनिकेशंस का यही एडवांटेज होता है कि आदमी को साइलेंटली पता चल जाता है कि उसकी कहां पर मिस्टेक हो रही है यदि वो स्टैंडर्ड्स लेके अपने लैबोरेटरी में पड़ा हुआ है तो उसको पता नहीं चलता है कि वो कहां पर मिस्टेक कर रहा है तो जब तक वो इस तरह की मीटिंग्स या सभाओं में भाग नहीं लेता है या अन्य किसी तरह की क्वालिटी ऑडिट्स वगैरह नहीं होती हैं तब तक उसको जो है आईएसओ 17025 से रिलेटेड जो मिस्टेक्स होती हैं आ, उसका पता नहीं चलता है आईएसओ 17025 की इंपॉर्टेंस ये है कि ये दुनिया का यूनिक स्टैंडर्ड्स है जो कि सभी फील्ड में अडॉप्ट होता है मोस्टली जहां पर भी लैबोरेटरी लैबोरेटरी से टेस्टिंग सिस्टम्स या कैलिब्रेशन सिस्टम्स या किसी भी तरह की चीज है उसमें जो है ये काफी प्रभावी होता है और सारी दुनिया के लोग इसको अडॉप्ट करते हैं तो जब इसका सर्टिफिकेट कहीं से जारी होता है तो उसको लोग मान्यता देते हैं जो उसकी कारण ये है अब मान्यता देते हैं तो आपको विश्वसनीय होना पड़ेगा मतलब सर्टिफिकेशन बॉडी ने आपको अडॉप्ट कर लिया लेकिन ये नहीं है कि आप जो है अडॉप्शंस के बाद जो है किसी भी तरह की गलती करें जो तो विश्वसनीयता जो है एक बहुत बड़ा चैलेंजिंग जॉब है इंडस्ट्रीज के लिए और लैबोरेटरीज के लिए एक बार आपके साथ किसी का विश्वास जुड़ जाता है तो आप कोशिश करें कि वो किसी भी तरह से टूटे ना हो जाए और वो जुड़ा रहे और जिससे कि आपके लैबोरेटरीज का लोग अधिक से अधिक जो फैसिलिटीज है उसका इस्तेमाल कर सके जो है तो ये एक बहुत बड़ी चैलेंजिंग थिंग्स है जो हम लोग के आरएसएलस में अधिकतर लैबोरेटरी ने आईएसओ 17025 का सर्टिफिकेशंस प्राप्त कर लिया है और इसमें अग्रणी होके अन्य जो उपकरण हैं जो है अपार्ट फ्रॉम जो मास है लेंथ है वॉल्यूम है या अन्य जर इलेक्ट्रिकल आइटम्स हैं जिसका कि इन्होंने सर्टिफिकेशंस प्राप्त किया है उसके अलावा भी जो अन्य सर्टिफिकेशन सिस्टम्स हैं उनको भी अडॉप्ट करने की जरूरत है 
तो लास्ट मीटिंग्स में भी मैंने इस बात का जिक्र किया जो है कि जब हम सर्टिफिकेशन सिस्टम्स के लिए जाते हैं तो हम पूरी तरह से अपने फील्ड्स को मतलब मैग्नेट करें जो है जिससे कि जो कंज्यूमर है हमारे के यहाँ एज ए कंज्यूमर्स ही लोग आते हैं चाहे इंडस्ट्री के लोग हों चाहे अन्य जगह के लोग हों यदि आपके यहाँ कैलिब्रेशन कराने के लिए आते हैं या टेस्टिंग कराने के लिए आते हैं तो आपके एक कंज्यूमर हैं तो जो विश्वसनीयता है लेबोरेटरी और कंज्यूमर्स के बीच में वो हर समय बनी रहनी चाहिए जो तो मेरा सबसे बड़ा आग्रह यही है जो कि जो हम अपने स्टैंडर्ड्स को हर समय मेंटेन करें उसके वैलिडेशन को व्यवस्थित करें इंटर लेबोरेटरी कंपेरिजन पॉसिबल हो तो समय से समय अपना कराते रहें जिससे कि हमारी विश्वसनीयता बरकरार रहे और जो कंज्यूमर्स के साथ रिलेशन्स हैं वो अधिक से अधिक बना रहे अब ये आशुतोष जी ने जो ये वीणा उठाया है कि हम 17025 को लेकर काफी आगे बढ़ेंगे और सभी इंडस्ट्रीज के साथ जो है इनका कंसल्टेशन करेंगे जो है तो ये बहुत ही सराहनीय कदम है और उम्मीद करते हैं कि इसमें वो काफी सफल होंगे और इंडस्ट्रीज भी लाभान्वित होंगी कंज्यूमर्स भी एट द लास्ट जो है इससे काफी बेनिफिटेड होंगे और इस सेमिनार की सफलता के लिए मैं अपनी तरफ से बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं देता हूं आदरणीय माथुर साहब ने जो है अपना समय निकाला और अपना जो टाइम दिया और अपने उनके जो विचार रहे हैं वो बहुत ही सराहनीय है और अनुकरणीय है जो है तो आशुतोष जी से अनुरोध है कि अपनी सभा का आगे आरंभ करें और लोग इसे अधिक से अधिक लाभान्वित हो थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू फॉर काइंड वर्ड्स एक्चुअली सर द पर्पस ऑफ दिस टू डेज वर्कशॉप इज टू हैव अ फेमिलरिटी अबाउट द स्टैंडर्ड 17025 व्हिच वी आर ऑल अवेयर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड जस्ट लाइक टू डिस्कस व्हाट इज इट्स रिक्वायरमेंट व्हाट इज दिस एंड देन द एक्सपर्ट्स फ्रॉम द नेशनल नेशनल एक्सपर्ट्स एज वेल एज इंटरनेशनल एक्सपर्ट्स विल एक्सप्लेन different different uh, clauses with the clause wise we will discuss in these two days and i hope that after two days we will be able to at least understand 20% or 30% of this standard rest slowly slowly with the continuous exercise we will get learn and we will reach up to 75% of this its understanding thank you very much sir now as we know about this uh, standard 17025 standard i am going to just directly start with this 17025 standard as we are all aware this is iso iec 17025 27 standard the earlier standard was in 1999 later on it was in 2005 and the recent uh, latest development of this international standard is 2017 we are all aware about this standard what is the objective actually the objective of this standard is to promote confidence in the operation of laboratories as we are all aware even we don't have the trust a unfortunate problem now in our system in our society is of trust and that's why we have developed a new system of otp always we ask one time password otp whether this this is this shows how trust how much trust we have upon each other so this this purpose of this particular document particular standard is to just have a confidence that once some something when is being done by one laboratory it is correct throughout the nation throughout the world so accordingly we are working on this standard it contains basically the requirements for laboratories to demonstrate demonstrate that they are operating competently yes obviously they are competent that's why they are operating and they are able to generate valid results what are the results these results how these results are valid we they are able to understand similarly these laboratories also confirm iso 9001 whichever whosoever the laboratories are having 17025 certification they are also having the compliance the principle of iso 9001 this document basically require the laboratory to plan and implement 
actions to address risk and opportunities. This risk and opportunities is very important subject, very important topic. What are the risks in its operation and what are the opportunities? I just came to know opportunity means that uh, if we know why if a laboratory having one certification or accreditation of a particular parameter and it is having the resource, having that traceable equipment as well as the manpower to do something extra from that accreditation, it can do that. That is the opportunity which this laboratory has. It just has to inform its accreditation body that this much accreditation I am having and now I want to do this particular test or I am doing this particular test in which I am having the competency. So kindly it may also be considered. This is basically the opportunities about which this particular standard speaks, but we have very good but international expert, uh, Professor Varen, who will speak yesterday, tomorrow about this, what are the risk and opportunities. We have requested him to speak about it. it basically, the standard address, both risk and op opportunities, establishing a basis for increasing the effectiveness of management, how the management is effective, how to achieve improved results, and how to prevent negative effects. The laboratory is responsible for deciding which risk and opportunities need to be addressed. Basically, this is the purpose of this ISO 9001 standard. And if we say that the laboratory is responsible to decide what are the risks in its operation, the use of this document will facilitate cooperation between laboratories and other bodies and assist in the exchange of inform information and experience in the harmonization of standards and procedures. The acceptance of results between countries is facilitated if laboratories conform to this document, as we are all aware, during this COVID time, all the countries were accepting the results of this uh, RT-PCR when the travelers or the passengers were going from one country to the another country, similarly from one state to the another state or one city to the another city. So this is the way how we are having the confidence about the system. It basically the acceptance of results between the countries, not only in the countries, states, cities, etc. This document, basically, you know, when we talk about the rule, we have the word shell in the rules or the regulation, we always use the word shell, which means it is mandatory, it has to be done. Similarly, under this document, we have used shell, should, may and can. Shell, which is an indicator, which indicates requirement and it has to be complied, it is necessary, it is mandatory, should, it is basically a recommendation, it should be done. May, it just indicate a permission, you may do. It And can, it indicates a possibility or a capability. I will give a very good example of may and can. Up uh, in a class, the, from the professor, a student comes and, ha and asks, sir, can I come? The professor replies, you may not, but you can. So this is the difference between may and can. You may not, but you can. So this is the same meaning of this standard we have in may and can. If we talk about this standard 170025, we have the eight clauses. Uh, all these clauses, clauses by clauses, we will discuss during this program. I'm just giving you a brief introduction of this whole uh, structure, whole program. Under this clause one, what the clause one speaks? It speaks about the specific general requirements of competence, impartiality, and consistent operation of laboratories. I think these are the most important three parameters upon which a laboratory or the whole structure, whole capacity building, whole country standard depends. Or when we talk about the standards or the when we talk about the SI system, everything depends upon the competence, impartiality, and consistent operation of laboratories. If a laboratory is competent, obviously it will it is very much required. It should be impartial and there must be a consistency in its operation. Similarly, it is applicable to all organizations which are performing laboratory activities, regardless of the number of persons, maybe one person or maybe thousand persons. Laboratory may have, depending upon its requirement, the number of persons, how many number of persons may perform this activity under this standard is given to the liberty to the laboratory. The, it can be used by the customers, regulators, organizations, schemes using peer assessment. Basically, all customers use this standard. Regulators use this standard like Legal Metallurgy has just signed for GATC with the NABL. And we are also having the organization and schemes using peer assessment like Legal Metallurgy. We are also going for peer assessment as per, with the International Organization of Legal Metallurgy, OIML. We are also having the 17025 accreditation in our regional reference standards laboratories. Accreditation bodies are using like NABL and others used in confirming or recognizing the competence of laboratories. Suppose, uh, suppose an independent body wants to get some test, it also it wants to confirm or recognize that what is the competence of laboratory. This standard can be used for all these 
these purposes. If we talk about the normative references, the normative references used by this standard are ISO IEC guide 99, which is International Vocabulary of Metallurgy, WIM, Basic and General Concepts and Associated Terms. And it also used ISO IEC 17000, which, used conformity, which is Conformity Assessment, Vocabulary and General Principles. As far as this guide 99 is concerned, as the year is given, this particular standard will be used. Wherever we talk about the standard which, in which there is no year on the updated form of this standard will be utilized, 17000 and all amendments. If we talk about the clause three of this standard, it is related with the terms and definitions. What are the basically the purpose of this document, the terms and definitions which are given in ISO IC guide 99, as I discussed in the last slide, ISO IC 17,000 and the terms and definitions given under this clause from 3.1 sub clause 3.1 to sub clause 3.9. All these are applies from it through it. ISO and IC maintain Technol terminological database for use in standardization at the following addresses. Anybody who wants to see what are the terminology, basically it's a very important. In for, as far as legal metallurgy is concerned, we also have the legal metallurgy guide for terminology and we also use whenever required what is the meaning of this particular terminology. You can get it done from these websites of ISO and from Electropedia. All these presentations whatsoever being done today and tomorrow, they will be given with the certificates to all the participants whenever we will issue the part certificate to parts of participation tomorrow or day after tomorrow, you will get all these type of presentations so that you can also understand later on what was discussed earlier. As far as this clause 3 is concerned, it has impartiality, it has complaint, it has interlaboratory comparison, it has intralaboratory comparison, interlaboratory when we go from one laboratory to the another laboratory and intralaboratory means within the laboratory we have this comparison. Proficiency testing, laboratory, decision rule, verification, and validation. Decision rule and validation will be discussed again by tomorrow by Professor Vernon Merkel, who is the expert, international expert on all these topics. Tomorrow we will discuss. Clause, if we, if we will go through these clause, clause by clause later, later on, because now uh, I feel uh, I will discuss it later on, all these definitions in due course of time, either today or tomorrow. And then we have the general requirements. Impartial four point uh, the class four, which speaks about the four point one, which is impartiality, and four point two confidentiality. Yes, it is very important for any system to run impartiality and confidentiality. If we are not impartial in any way or in any sphere of life, we cannot have the good system. Whether it is a society, it is a family, it is a nation, or it is a standard body. So everywhere we need impartiality and confidentiality, which we will again discuss. Basically, if we talk about the impartiality, impartiality is again divided in these subclauses. Subclause 4.1.1 speaks about the laboratory activities shall be undertaken, undertaken impartially and structured and manage so as to safeguard impartiality. We have to see all the activities should be impartial, it should be structured so that we should know if there, at any point of time there is some deviation, if there is a structured formula, we can understand what is there and how we can save it or how we can go back to our, to our system of impartiality, how we can safeguard impartiality. The laboratory management shall be committed to impartiality. It is very important because it is the responsibility of the management to be impartial. If my laboratory on the request of a consumer is issuing a certificate without doing the calibration and testing, it is only on the wish of the management who allows it. Otherwise, it is not possible. Laboratory will never issue a certificate without calibration or the testing. Similarly, the laboratory shall be responsible for the impartiality of its laboratory activities and shall not allow commercial, financial or other pressures to compromise impartiality. We have to be taken care of all these parameters. The laboratory shall identify risks to its impartiality on an ongoing basis. This shall include those risks that arise from its activities or from its relationships or from the relationships of its personnel. However, such relationships do not necessarily present a laboratory with a risk to impartiality. And obviously, it is not necessary that they will be present in a laboratory working or in a laboratory functioning. Next, 4.1.5 clause speaks, if a risk to impartiality is identified, the laboratory should be able to demonstrate how it eliminates or minimizes such with the laboratory, how it will do. The second clause is 4.2, which is confidentiality. Confidentially, 4.2.1 speaks that the laboratory shall be responsible through legally enforceable commitments, legally enforceable commitments for the management of all information obtained or created 
during 4.2.1. Is it shared? Okay. 4.2.1. Yes. The laboratory shall be responsible through legally enforceable commitments for the management of all information obtained or created during the performance of laboratory activities. It is also very important that, and you know, it is not necessary that we are having a signing that document. It is the part of the standard that it should be legally enforceable commitment. That means every laboratory has to have a signed confidentiality agreement, which we have as an assessor of NABL. We have also signed this as uh, this confidentiality assessor assignment with the national NABL and the national accreditation board for testing and calibration laboratories. The laboratory shall inform the customer in advance of the information it intends to place in the public domain. Yes, it is also very much required because now we are asking that the certificate should be available on the on the website of the laboratory or the NABL, except for information that the customer may uh, makes public available or when the agreed between the laboratory and the customer, all other information is considered proprietary information and shall be regarded as confidential. So the laboratory does not have a right to make any confidential information pub in public domain. When the laboratory is required by law under 4.2.2, when when the laboratory, thank you, when the laboratory is required by law or authorized by contractual agreements to release confidential information, the customer or individual concerned shall, unless prohibited by law, be notified of the information provided. It is also very important that the laboratory has an agreement with the customer that it will not share any information, any confidential information with the public or will not place in the public domain or will not share with anybody. But at the same time, it is also very much required that whenever the law, when the, when the regulators or any agency authorized by law ask for any confidential information, that information has to be given by a laboratory, by an accredited laboratory to the authority for the purpose of, for their own purpose. So these are basically small clauses which I wanted to share, I wanted to discuss with you rest of the clauses. Now I have not discussed with the what, what are the definitions. We will discuss it later on during the course of this. I am just leaving this confidential information, this definitions right now. I am not taking it under this class three. Rest of the information. Rest of the now I will uh, I have with us. I think uh, Mr. Anil Kumar. Oh, yes. So these are the small things which we wanted to discuss. These are the small parameters. These, these are the these were the informations which we wanted to discuss uh, about the basic clauses. First of all, being an inaugural session, just an overview about the 17025 standard. I wanted to discuss with you. I wanted to thank all my chief guests, my guest of honors, and speakers who have given their valuable time on Saturday and Sundays for the capacity building of the country. These programs are for the capacity building of the country. You will find that after a very short duration of time, we are having the developed standards in the country. We are developed, we are a country which is developed by the tech technical standards. Now we have with us. Uh, these were the uh, small things which we wanted to discuss. Uh, I think uh, now the next speaker is uh, Professor Anil Kumar, who is the. Uh, Professor uh, Anil Kumar, as we are all aware of him, he is. We have with us 
Professor Anil Kumar, who is the chief scientist from National Physical Laboratory. Uh, and uh, he basically in the country, in the National Physical Laboratory, I think uh, he has started this. Uh, he was the quality manager for this 17025. And the National Physical Laboratory, we being NMI of the country, used to go for the peer assessment internationally. As I am aware, yeah, Professor Kotnala started this 17025 for magnetism. He started, uh, uh, Professor Anil Kumar started for the, for the mass and balances, volume and density, force, standard, etc. Sir, uh, Professor Anil Kumar has a lot of, uh, he is basically mechanical of engineer, mechanical engineering from DC, Delhi College of Engineering. He has his BSc engineering for mechanical engineering from PIT Mesra. He joined National Physical Laboratory. He has done a lot of research papers. Lot of, and everybody knows about uh, uh, Professor Anil Kumar, who is basically he is the pointer in the mass, who has done a lot of work in the mass metrology, volume, density, etc., mass and balances. Sir, he has done a lot of research paper. He is lead assessor of NABL and uh, he has done 100 plus audits of the laboratories. So, most of the accredited laboratories in our country are aware of Professor Anil Kumar. Sir, I will request <laughs> Professor Anand Kumar yes. to kindly speak about the standards and kindly let us know, sir, what uh, what standards and how we can develop a laboratory, how a laboratory can perform in this in his sphere of in his sphere of scope. Professor Anand Kumar, sir, please. Sir, thank you so much for nice introduction of myself. I am really very sir, happy. It is true. So it nice is true. introduction of it myself. It is true, sir. Whatsoever I am telling, it is true. <laughs> thank you very much, sir. Please. No, no. But, but it is a humble request. You have got a lot of uh, introduction of, about myself. But I simply start the things uh, with the because I heard the clause number four from your side because I opened late late on later on. So I will start from the directly from the clause number five. What the tasks assigned by you? Clause number five, six point one, six point two, six point three, and six point four. These are the things I will address to you. So 6.5 so also. Just 6.5 also. Not 6.4. You have given up to limit 6.4. Sir, so 6.5 is also there. <laughs> Kindly check it. <laughs> Please. Right, right. Thank you, sir. Achha, to share ka nahi aara, yaar. Santosh, share DJ. Anil Kumar, sir, share kar dijiye. Ek minute mein Sir, kindly send your presentation also because I have to share with all the participants immediately after the program. No, no, I have presentation made di aapko already oh, subhi. Mail me sir, abhi. Mail pe. Abhi, thank you very much, sir. Then I will share. No problem if it is required. Aapke na Ashutosh Agarwal thirteen pe bejiye maine. Okay, sir. I am just taking it. Sir, share the right bejiye Anil sir ko. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So now you can share. Yeah, share for So I just start with the things size so I see one zero two five. 2017 morning you are heard about these things and this standard is very you now user friendly standard previous we have got so many standards with us like iso 9001 9002 many standards are there and there is a different standards people are going for different standards 1025 2005 and iso 9001 2008 now there are a lot of problems are going on but Ultimately, the world community and world fraternities think that we should make one standard, which will you address ISO 9001-2008 as well as ISO 1025-2005 together. So this standard is mainly taking the problem of ISO 9001 principally, and they want more modification. And you say it takes 12 years to modify this standard to with the new version. First version has come in 99. Second version is come in 2005. Only six years come for the second version of this particular standard. But it takes 12 years to modify this particular standard, which come in November 2017, to take care of all the things which we are facing with the problem with multiple standards. 
and this standard is now very user friendly they say ki so much paper work was there in 2005 they want to reduce it and they says in this particular standard they say ki you have to only follow the things what you are doing people are following exactly the word by word this particular standard this is not the requirement of this particular standard and previously there was a five chapters now in this particular standard there are eight chapters first chapter is general requirement second chapter structural requirement and third is the up uh, basically the requirement of your standards the resource requirement and then process requirement and the general management requirement these are the chapters broadly they based on the clause wise what i am addressing you uh, chapter 5 clause number 5 structural requirement and after that uh, that uh, basic requirement of uh, that uh, input requirements of your resource requirement resource required means which you have already have like personal equipment this is called a resource requirement so that will be addressed later on but first i will say structural requirement so structural requirement means the first point which is already addressed previously also in there in the 2005 version standard you must have the legal identity which are the main important point i have showed by the board or underline something like that you have to stress on that particular points the 5.1 the laboratory shall have a legal identity or define of a legal identity that is legally responsible for laboratory activities this is a general question people are asked why we want a legal identity our problem said when we are providing the services as per the standard so somebody issue the certificate and then he run away so therefore this legal identity is very much required and legal identity you can say we have got a gst number with us we got a service tax number with us previous before gst and we should get the nabl but now nabl is very much defined our accreditation body another accreditation body defined about the legal identity like a, in our nabl which is india's accreditation body this says you must have the proprietorship proprietorship means you must have the company's accounts for demonstration for make evidence evidence then public private limited company that you have got that some number or if in particular act shop or some act in the particular streets prevailing that is also taken as a legal entity and they are very much clear in nabl documents they have shown five legal entity which is valid but gst number is not a valid as a legal entity as per our accreditation body structure so first understand which legal entity we have to take this is not your own will is a we have got a gst number we got a legal identity you can verify anything from gst number this is not like that so legal identity and this is the first point when you have address for accreditation your applications to nabl the legal identity is the first point so they will check it what are the thing and you have to load that particular certificate if your proprietorship you have to load your bank statement and the name of company or proprietor that you have to show as a evidence or if you got a private limited company or then you have to show that legal entity if you part of the big company then big company legal entity is valid for the part of the uh, your other labs if you are part of that uh, big system so that legal entity is the first point of structural requirement structural requirement previously in old standard 99 version or 2005 version was the address how your structure should be there if you read from the morning you have to read now you can operate with the one person can open the particular lab calibration lab testing lab or sampling lab any lab can be opened by one person but our 
accreditation body says ki how can the one person can do every work but this standard allow you only one person can do all the works for the purpose of the document above government laboratory is deemed to be a legal entity on the uh, basis of government status so any government lab has got to required so uh, this document they given on the same basis this is given in the note but if you are a part of the big organizations then you also legal identity is valid of that your parent organizations so that is important this is a first point and this whole point has to be smartly address in your quality manual as a 5.1 5.2 laboratory shall identify management that has overall responsibility for the laboratory who will take care all your responsibilities in the lab that you have to identify in 5.2 clause it can be coa it can be head of the laboratory it can be your management representative which we called mr anybody can be there you have to identify if any problem is there in the laboratory he will take care of all resources all management all other things has to be taken care by that particular person that has to be addressed previously in old standards or other standards uh, in versions we want a full system coa then quality measure then technical measure their deputies then calibration engineers then customer care these are the general organization chart was there but this standard not addressing anything about quality manager or technical manager or their deputies he is more particular about the management uh, system uh, overall so who is taking care of the management system so 5.2 you and the address who will take care of all activities on your particular lab the laboratory shall define and document range of laboratory activities for which it confirm with this document the laboratory shall only conformity with the documents for this range laboratory activities which excludes external provided laboratory activities on an arranging basis it means if you are doing you have write a scope you have to Uh, you have to the range of laboratory activities suppose you are also doing the calibration of equipment or testing of the some uh, uh, equipment but also you are repairing the equipments or you are selling the equipments that should not be included in this particular clause that that should be excluded from your defined scope which is not be to address in your aggregated scope so that is the main of this particular clause so you have to understand which activities we have to address with relation to your business that you have to address in this particular clause koi thoda sa idhar ho sakta hai the laboratory activities shall be carried out in a such a way as to meet the requirement of this document the laboratories customer regulatory authorities and organizations provided providing regulations so laboratory activities shall be carried out means the activities which you are carrying out in the laboratory shall meet the requirement of this particular standard which you have written or your document manual because i am not least interested about the word of quality manual but this is a general word also we accepted by our accreditation body but if you see this particular standard quality is used four times only in whole of the standard so smartly i want that your quality manual should be changed with another name it can be a document manual process manual anything but 
90% as such the standard has got 5 years when the, this standard was launched in November 2017 everybody is putting their name as quality manual or management system requirement manual something like that but i want quality word should be not be addressed in quality manual this is my requirement if standard is changing and you are following the new policies put particular new name to your document manual or quality manual because quality is addressed only four times in this particular standard so that you have to mention because uh, this document is the main apex document in this structural requirement this shall include laboratory activities performed in all its permanent facilities at sites away from its uh, permanent facility and associated temporary or mobile facilities or such customer facility so our accreditation body has recognized three types of laboratory in house calibration that is called a permanent second is on site and third is mobile but you have be very particular which labs you are taking on particular parameters like if you are doing the volume calibration at mobile you could not do it because if you take on the wheels the volume calibrations it will not give the stable results so vibration is playing important part so mobile laboratory they define like you doing the vernier caliper then you can do it as a mobile laboratory but uh, our accreditation body has given the status of three types of laboratory permanent which is you are doing carried out in house second is on site and third is mobile the laboratory shall define the organizations and management structure of the laboratory in its place in any parent organizations and the relationship between the organizations the technical operations and the support services so this is they have general you have to make a organization chart i told uh, previously that uh, this is a general one uh, example i give the organization chart the coa then the head of the laboratory or quality manager then technical manager then calibration engineer then customer care this is a general very very general what i am telling you the person is required but one person can take both the activities also together like a quality manager and technical manager can be combined can be one person calibration engineers and other things can be also a customer care can also be one depend on the number of person and the uh, uh, available work with you volume of work so that is the important but you have to make a organization chart when and when you applying our uh, accreditation body in india like nabl then you have to show your organization charts and you have to also show which persons are doing the site calibrations and which person are doing the in house calibrations that uh, you have to load that organization chart in your applications so you have to make some organization chart and when you are making a document manual or quality manual then you have to show your organization chart of your uh, laboratory or uh, your uh, activities you are carried out and if you are uh, part of that big organizations then you have to say how you are related to that organization what is your role of your organizations with relation to the your parent organizations so that you have to make a two organization charts one relation to your parent organizations and second what is the doing your persons who is the person related to your organizations then you have to make two organization charts but if your organization is parent organization is not big then you can also show in one organization chart relation to that so that should be very carefully made with the different persons are available and it can address your organization chart address 
these persons are carrying out the technical activities this is a quality activities but again i am addressing that if this standard is not required you have to require specially mention technical manager or quality manager or deputies or other things but since we have to go for accreditation board so they are following some rules we have to follow for accreditation board of nabl so that it means you have to make a definite organization chart i told you example of a model organization chart which we have generally we follow so but it depends your volume of work your nature uh, how your persons are there available or, or technical person are available and in some previous previous condition was there if you are making somebody quality manager he has to go some training program as per iso iic was 17025 2017 but if he has done already 2005 then he has to go, go for two days course otherwise he has to go four days training program and that is the requirement of when you are applying for the application to nabl but now it is not necessary but uh, at least somebody has got the training of iso iic 1025 2017 when you are applying for nabl specify responsibility authorities interrelationship of the personnel who manage perform or verify work work affecting the results of laboratory activities so you have to make in quality manual some annexures or same part of your quality manual you have to assign the responsibility and authority to your different personals who are working in the particular laboratory so that is important but people generally sometimes they have put the annexure in the responsibility and authority and sometimes they don't with the interrelationship interrelation means you can show smartly in organization chart by putting the arrows like a customer care can report directly to your coa or quality come technical manager or technical manager you show can by the arrow calibration engineer has to we go only up to technical manager or quality come technical manager so this is uh, give the inter relationship with the different personnel so that you can show smartly in your organization chart or you can address separately also that is not requirement just i am giving the one way how to address inter relationship because this is generally missing from when you putting the in quality manual the this responsibility and authorities there is no addressing of interrelationship and many things authorities also sometimes missing from their responsibility means technical manager has got responsibility he has to take in all technical matters he has to take in care of but he has to sign the calibration report or calibration certificate then this is his authority this is his authority or authority of coa you can only sign this called type of authority should be there or he can take a decision this standard we have to follow this is called authority of difference between the responsibility and authority the power he can use it so you have to mention smartly when you putting the responsibilities then put three four lines about the authority but this particular person have got so much authority when you making the annexure for responsibility and authority but normally what i've seen authority and interrelationship is missing smartly they follow the every line in the quality manual but actual practice they could not show any evidence about this authority and interrelationship the documents its uh, procedures it to extend necessary to ensure the consistent application of its laboratory activities and the validity of the results so you have to make one document giving all the procedures he is not asking any procedure for you he is telling you you have to make a make a list of all documents for complaints for your uh, your personal competence you make a documents giving the list of procedures 
you have to follow like you will follow like in this particular uh, 2017 standard you have to follow 12 13 procedure so you make a list of it you have a document giving the reference of all documents with your specific identifications so meaning of this particular clause c you have to make a list of documents for your all procedures so it will be easier for you also to manage which procedure we are following with so much number and other things and sometimes technical procedures numbers is also there in your certificates the laboratory shall have personal who who irrespective of the other responsibility have the authorities and resources needed to carry out their duties including implementations maintenance and improvement of the management system if you read these particular points and if you old remembrance of the old standard of 99 version and 2005 version so you will it is appear that this is the responsibilities of quality manager but previous Uh, thing i am telling there is a no they want any quality manager or technical manager and they want all should be the persons who is working in the laboratory should be the all rounder if you see any team is working like a football match the forward should also come to the defense or defense person should come to the forward this type of philosophy they want so laboratory shall have persons who irrespective of their responsibilities so this uh, things are very important for take carrying out the laboratory activities implementations maintenance and improvement of the uh, management systems identifications of deviations from the management system or from the procedures for performing the laboratory activities initiating the actions to prevent or minimize such deviations reporting to laboratory management on the performance of the management system and any need for improvement ensuring the effectiveness of the laboratory activities so these are the responsibility of particular person but they have not mentioned right particular person's name but if you read carefully about these points these are the duties of basically quality manager so these are the important points what are the deviation coming management is thinking like you have to make work only this goal your complaint should be minimized you should be 10% and you receive the complaints 20% that is called a deviation but you have put your goals and if you are not meeting from that particular goals that is called a deviations you have put like that ki we have to achieve so much cmc and we could not achieving it putting lot of financial things for the equipment or your or arrangement or your technical arrangement so that is called a deviations so this has to be addressed why this deviation is coming it should be minimized and what are you getting from maintaining so much standard so much documentations what are you getting actual goal is that we are maintaining our laboratory but what is the things we are getting from that that is also be addressed in this particular clause the laboratory management shall ensure that the communication take place regarding the effectiveness of the management system and the importance of meeting customers and other requirements so communication is very important people have put exactly the same wordings in their quality manual or document manual but you have to you have to see how the communication takes place between the management and the persons and the customer requirements how can we take care with the same system so you can take by email or 
you can a personal meeting with them or you put some agenda on your notice boards or how you are taking care of so you have to address communications how is it taking place between the higher authorities or higher management which is a different working staff different personals in your laboratory so that has to be taken care of communication people are put exactly the same words in their quality manual or document manual so that has to be taken care of the integrity of management systems is maintained when changes to the management system were planned and implementation so integrity of the system is very important because if somebody is leaving the organizations so there should not be collapse of the system and when important person is leaving like a, your authorized secretary as per our regulation body's rules you have to inform within 15 days because that is the one of the important thing and the management system when you are make integrity is very important there has to be maintained whether any staff is come or join or anything but authorized secretary is the one of the important point of the certificate because he is authorized for the authorizing the certificate as per our accreditation bodies rules and regulations so that is very important so this is structural requirement these all points are important from the structural point of view of your organization of your lab how you are maintaining what is your organization chart what is your legal identity whether you got a permanent lab or site laboratory or mobile laboratory what are the features of it what are the responsibilities and authorities or different personals and how you are taking any deviation is coming from the management system your quality policy quality objectives many things are there which you have to address in this particular clause so in this clause you have to make first you have to make the document of legal entity which you have already have by a proprietorship or a private limited company or any document is there which you show your legal entity second is that you have to show that our laboratory is working as a permanent laboratory or site calibrations or mobile calibrations then you have to make one annexure for giving responsibilities and authorizations to different personals that has to be clear and the duties who is taking care of the activities in the laboratory that i have addressed point 5 points i have addressed in that things and that organization chart you have to show interrelationship between the different persons then the communications you have to address and ultimately if any changes came because all the clauses which is written in 1025/2017 standard is general in nature this is meant for all countries not meant for india only that you have to understand so that you have to follow that particular feeling of that the crux of that particular clause with the indian conditions that is uh, my submission don't follow language any problem there is some opinion and difference of opinion to understanding the different clauses in your own features so but try to understand in the indian connection and same times i request you have to follow if you are going for accreditations you have to follow the rules and regulations of your accreditation body and abl so that is the most important things when you are writing your particular clause in the document manual or quality manual then you have to address what you are doing actually what is your legal identity that you have to address don't confuse don't give the so many examples of your legal identity suppose you got a gst number you got a some uh, company ships some msme certificate number don't put all together in clause number 5.1 that is a you call as smartness scripts you have to write in short you write every address clause that will be give yes you are doing correct work don't show your importance that we have got addressing so many things in legal identity we have got so many documents with us only thing is that which is the most important document as per the our accreditation body's requirement put the only that thing because you have to load when you putting application to accreditation body for uh, your accreditation then you have to load that particular document so don't have to load all the documents because he will accept that portal will accept only the one document so decide yourself 
don't show importance here we are msc ni certificate with us we got a gst certificate with us some or uh, things which are recognizing us as a certificate don't show it which is the particular requirement show uh, show that particular certificate the legal entity and show your laboratories can do both the works in house as well as site or mobile put separately as per the nabl uh, regulations our accreditation bodies rules have made which when you putting application you have to tick mark permanent site or mobile so that is has to be taken care of and then responsibility and authority is interrelationship is very important so that is about the structural requirement this is the second clause after clause number 5 general requirement then is called structural requirement now we are coming to the next clause is of resource requirement so resource means which you have already got what are your resources your personals your equipments these are your basically a resource things are same but they have address differently in this particular standard so 6.1 is called a resource requirement so because seven clause will come of the processes and eight the general management requirement so six is only for resource and in our report resource means which you already have got which you understand as a resource your personal your machinery your equipments all are there your resources so this particular clauses are address only for your resource so first they resource they will address in about your personal and second in the source they are addressing about equipments so 6.1 clause is general clause the laboratory shall have available the personal facilities equipment system and support court services necessary to manage and perform its laboratory activities so resources meaning they given everything in that thing and you if you notice carefully about this particular clause they use the word available previously in old standard it was mandatory but they have generally they use the word available you must have the persons to carry out that particular activity it should not be a, your permanent employees this is a requirement standard is saying facilities and equipment if you don't have the equipment you take the equipment from other body and show your competence because all over what we are discussing from the morning competition competence is the main source you have to show the competence to carry out that particular activity that is the requirement of this particular standard so that is the most important word but you have to understand and carefully have to address the word available this particular clause 6.1 the main focus on the word of available that should be available at the time of audit or accreditation but in this particular case you have to follow our accreditation bodies rules and regulations how they taken care of the available word with particular carrying out the particular activities and again i am telling you this standard is very general this is for all countries not for india so when you are writing the thing the things you are understanding actually you are doing the work actually in your laboratory or organization so you can better you can write the things according to particular clause and what are you doing you are following you write with that particular clause don't copy it don't follow it totally in your in the words of standard you have to follow your own words so i am telling the basic things which they have changed in this particular standards so they have bring the word of available for all the things for your resources so this is the 6.2 clause the personal all personnel of the laboratory either internal or external that could influence the laboratory activity shall impartially 
the competent and work in accordance with the laboratories management system so these are the things they have asked for both personal they are saying it can be internal or external internal means which you have hired already which are your uh, permanent employees or temporary employees and some you hired as a consultant for carrying over that particular activities that is allowed by the standard so they have put the word of internal or external so that you have to carry it out with that thing and if you read keep with this three things are very important and these three words will be go throughout in the standard in the management system in your quality policy quality objectives everything will go these words impartially impartiality then competent and carrying out the activities with the management system what you have already fit so these three things are will go first is impartially the competence and the work in accordance with the laboratories management system so these these three things are very very important and if you read carefully this particular standard many place these three things are mentioned <coughs> so persons uh, should be competent and competence can be judge of particular person in many ways so personal the person who is uh, under the under the in charge or laboratory head to be very careful to know the competency of the person it can be judged in many ways and impartiality you have read the 4.1 clause in the morning the impartiality because impartiality is very very important to carry out calibration activities testing activities or sampling activities if you are not impartial then you could not carry out that particular activity impartially suppose i give you example if you know your your friend you know and he says you are please do my this work in the uh, and when i submit the for calibrations in one day and you got a queue of four days so normally mentality is that you do that work for your friend or some pressure or management gives you pressure please you do pressures 50 pressure gauges in one day i give you the incentive so these things will hamper to carry out impartial calibration activities or testing activities or these things and this go in many ways many if you are concerned with the laboratory activities testing activities or sampling activities this sometimes going on that process so sometimes because the core things of this particular standard is impartiality previously they put only two lines in the old standard in 2005 version they put only two lines now they put a particular clause 4.1 for impartiality so impartiality is the pillar of that thing and second pillar is the competency and third work in accordance with the laboratories management system laboratory management system has put some policies some conditions that work has to be carried out in that particular fashion so these three are very important and these are important for personal also which is the standard is saying so but uh, in many things sometimes very very difficult to maintain the impartiality i give you two examples so these are the things you have to follow if you want to make a header system or you want to set a example when you are following this particular standard because in these things so many things are diluted to follow these three pillars sometimes it will look like is very difficult but if you got a will you can do it if you are following this particular standard you are taking trainings and other things try to do be your best i don't say ki you pretend 100% nobody can maintain 100% 
because in indian values relations is playing a important part but try to do it at least you got a first division 70% try to do it impartiality competency and and competency doesn't mean ki you can operate that particular system you must know in our inside out with the, uh, with respect to the standard that is the meaning of this particular clause and i told you these things will go in many clauses so try to understand these these things very importantly to understand the this particular standard the laboratory shall document the competence requirements for each functions influencing the results of laboratory activities including requirements for educations qualifications training technical knowledge skills and experience so if you read this particular standard 1025 2017 they have got some broadly said they have mentioned somewhere they put the document somewhere they put the process somewhere they put the procedure some they put the retained report somewhere they put the records so try to understand that particular clause where the procedure is required now this particular clause 6.2.2 required a document document means you have to make a document if i require calibration engineer what are their things which is they have put addressly educations qualifications training and technical knowledge skills and experience so you make even document addressing the different persons putting all these things education qualification technical knowledge skills and training and all these things and then you put it one document you have to generate one document normal practice is that people write a procedure because in this particular clause there are first procedure will come they put all these things together in procedure but this particular clause 6.2.2 require you have to generate one document you have to write person's name or general you read this is technical manager so you require qualifications experience technical knowledge skills training put dot together and then put ki when the we take the person as a technical manager we should fulfill all these things as per the particular clause so you have to generate one document because this problem normally comes when people are make making their performance or documents or writing their procedures but this is special requirement of this particular clause you have to generate one document and put giving these things what is this educations if you write diploma holder with 5 years experience then don't deviate from it sometimes you get a iti person with 5 years experience you take as a person which is required diploma holder you write a minimum qualification diploma holder then don't take it this is called a deviation form your policies you are not working at rounds with the management system so very smartly you will generate this but particular document giving all these things qualifications training and which is the persons available around you which you can easily you take it not make so regress i want a phd holder or i want a mtech in particular field sometimes you have to like a you want a normal people are available in btech in electronics so write a btech don't define then branch but enable criteria they all define if you are following mechanical laboratory you should have the diploma or btech in mechanical and if you are following electronics or electrical you must have the that degree so like a, if you got a degree in chemical you could not do mechanical or electronics but i think in my general way if anybody is in, uh, taking the btech degree in any uh, uh, a branch he can easily can handle the things but same thing you have to manage with the conditions of your accreditation board so you have to generate as per 6.21 document 6.2.3 the laboratory shall ensure that the persons have the competence to perform laboratory activities 
for which they are responsible and to evaluate the significance of deviations so with the time and time you have to judge the competence of particular persons which you are doing in the activities so normally anything any way you can judge the competence of the person sometimes when is performing the activities in the particular equipment or particular generating some document of uncertainty you can ask that question from him ki how you are taking the reading which place you are taking what is the thing and you put a from the another pen you put a circle on that thing i checked it this is also one way of checking the competence of particular persons he is following following that particular person is doing some activities on particular equipment then you feel with your experience he is following the things which we have written in our documents is following or not very easy to judge the competence of persons by their talking they are generating the documents their observation sheets many thing you can do it and you can if you got a failing a problem then you can generate the competence matrix write 23 points of your knowledge practical knowledge which you are doing and ask that particular persons suppose you are doing the mass calibration this standard you are following and there are other standards are also or not then you put the marking and you can generate just if he is got from 50 is got a 30 marks that person is competent this is another way i am telling you there are so many ways because people are very confused about the judging the competency of the particular person but there are many ways you can do it and put when you are doing actually you are devoting your time for judging that particular person put your sign there see that activity and show as evidence yes i have judged that particular particular person's competence and is following written documents what we have already made he is following the instructions manual of different manufacturers with the particular equipment and he is following the environmental conditions practically to performing that particular experiment and with machines he is getting the better cnc which i am not expecting so these are the things your competence is always speaks itself so there are many ways but you must know how to do it but don't do theoretically you this clause people not putting more energy on the competence first they are not generating any document ki what the persons i should require in my laboratory so that first 6.2.2 is very important you have to generate one document and you have to judge the competence of the persons Six point two laboratory shall have procedure and retained records. So these are the important. So in this particular standard, the first procedure has come for your personal. So where the word is written procedure, then you have to write a procedure. Don't generate extra procedures or extra works or formas other things as per the standard. because i have seen people are generating so many procedures which is not required in this particular standard and if you read clause 1 2 3 and 4 they have written he they are not required so many documents to make them understand and they have written in the level of like that if you can understand the technical procedure for following that particular standard then you don't have to do the procedure also but in that case we have to follow the accreditation bodies rules and regulations and that management system requirements what are there you have to follow but this standard is so open so helpful he if you can understand the auditor your technical procedure then you don't have to write so it should not be so many paperwork they are giving minimum paperwork required but what you have to write what you actually you are doing to so understand particular class with your conditions and more important for indian conditions because you are following this particular standard which is written for 165 countries not for india alone so you have to write or generate the document to understanding because sometimes this document are translated from other language 
so sometimes you got a also grammatical mistake to understand that particular clause so that you have to follow particularly in total with your conditions and with the index condition and with your particular labs how you are performing with reference to the particular clause so you have to write a procedure and retain records determining the competence requirements selection of personnel training of personnel supervision of personnel authorizations of personnel monitoring competence of personnel so you have to write a procedure and retaining the records because the the word use procedures and the retain record which i shown in the bold letters so you have to maintain regarding this first is the determining the competence requirement what is this competence he is if he is uh, operating cnc lathe what is his competence how can he do it how can understand the instruction he read it or not so this is a things for any machines any metallurgical requirement or metallurgical machines you have to very particular then the selection of personnel so this personnel this are not addressed carefully in their particular clause how you have selected that particular person in your organization people are very silent about it sometimes make some uh, chart process chart also ki how we selecting we are taking hiring the uh, some agencies for hiring the persons otherwise we put a board on the gate of our organization the person is come to us we take the interview so this things you have to address in your procedures how we are selecting that particular person in our level we are taking the interview we are taking some test but normally majority of people are not addressing is properly that training of person this you have to maintain the record so you have to make at least one or two trainings per year for all persons this is a management requirement we have to show now that third pillar work according to the management requirement so training is a essential part many things are going or change and many things are updated so persons are required and not all the persons are required at training in particular standard 2005 there was a clause evolution of the training it is not there in this particular clause but if you do properly because if you in organization five persons are working and you send one person for training so that person has to percolate that training to other persons in that case you get a evolution of the training by asking the four person what they have learned from that particular person or whether that person has learned so much from the training or not the still doubts are there or not this is discussions and this you can call a group meeting or other things so this training is very important and training try to do from not for your nc purpose or for so the basis of your nabl accreditations do practically thinking over that it will enhance our competency we learn something about that particular parameter and what the future things we are doing to it learn in that way not put as a load from our accreditation body yes you must have over training for this particular thing learn in that way so and learn try to do from some learned persons or learned organizations because many people are in this india as conducting that training so effectively they should know it it should be a betterment of your organization don't take is a load people generally take the training as a load and they say ki it is a extra burden on the laboratory but if you take training seriously many things you can learn your equipment can be versatile not for only one per parameter it can be versatile so try to understand and do the training and try to do in your policies and management system try to do one or two trainings per year for whole of the staff and what are the new features are coming new annexures are coming and in that case you can go on the many website also the organizations like a bipm aplac what are the policies going to change in calibration interval many topics are debatable which you can learn from it training you can discuss it 
so training is one of the important part and it enhances the competency of the person and then the supervision of the personal so this is also very important person should not do his own will he should be supervised whether he is doing the work correctly or not with this competency and what the responsibility and authority you have given to him so supervision should be there and if person is under training then supervision is very important part the person is new or training then supervision then authorize signatory who are authorized to sign in that particular observation sheet or certificate that is called as supervision after that the authorization of personal and monitoring competency of personal i told you the many ways you can judge the competency of personal like if you doing force calibrations so what are the things are required because force is not a scalar quantity it is a vector quantity so many problems are there many things are there i am not taking the example of force many things are there so on particular parameter which you are following so you can judge the competency of person small example i told you in the force if he is not making the centering of the equipment by his own knowledge the person is not competent and if he is taking 5 hours to make the centering of the particular equipment with respect to the axis in the standard then he is not a competent so you can judge day to day basis you can judge the competency of person laboratory shall authorize personals to perform specific laboratory activities including but not limited to the following development modifications verifications and validations of method we already if you authorize the one person who can do other activities which is they are addressing then dinner i am telling this standard is very open you can do lot of things with context with this particular standard so in that case laboratory shall authorize persons to perform the specific uh, laboratory activities including but not limited to the following developments modifications and verification and validation of method analysis of results including the statement of conformity or opinion and interpretations and third is report review and authorization of results so these are the important and these clauses will come later on in details so this person one person can be do all these activities especially if you assign it is a betterment for the organization Six point three, the facilities and environmental conditions. So here the word people generally forget about facilities. We said we got the facility for calibration of this particular thermometer, IR thermometer. We can calibrate this. They understand like facilities. So the word is meaning it different in this particular clause. Here facility means how you house yourself in the building. That is called a facilities. how you put your equipment in that particular lab what are the things you have taken in your room what are the structure you have made in that particular that is called a facilities so that is this is clause as it is was mentioned in previous 2005 version but facilities word they have put more energy on that thing and people think under facility ki we are putting equipment so we are putting the equipment we are in the dimension as well as thermal together so these are not the facilities you are not generating the facilities good facilities in the lab so that is the important part of that thing and the environmental conditions environmental conditions are very very important for carrying out any your calibration activity or testing activity or sampling activity that has to be taken care of the facilities and environmental condition shall be suitably for the laboratory activities and shall not adversely affect the validity of results so these are the two important like your instrument is uh, seven digit and 
you have put that instrument near that door where the air current will come and everything will be disturbed so these are the things you have to follow how you are putting the equipment which is not invalidated your results you doing the volume which is calibration which is the humidity is very low so you got a lot of this is stabilization of your balance and more evaporation loss so these are the conditions that you have to put on the thing but another say another say is that don't follow theoretically also generally people following the theoretically your auditor comes to your place and show ki show me the certificate of lux vibrations noise and all these things he should be done in the practical way if you can easily note down the reading with your system then why the lux certificate is required we have put the limit in specific criteria of accreditation body but why you want a certificate it is 250 lux to 700 lux or 350 lux to 700 lux if we can easily take the reading and you can see the auditor can judge whether the things are proper or not why you want a certificate same thing with the vibrations why you required a certificate of vibration when you put down granite plate Four inch thick, same with dead weight tester. Then why require a certificate of vibrations? And nobody knows. I know actually, nobody knows what is the limit of vibrations. But as soon as the person auditor enters, he wants these all certificates. So that should not happen. This is the, not the requirement of the standard. But many NCs are raised on these particular issues. If these conditions are taken care of, when you enter the lab. so why you want a certificate of that particular thing you could not judge yourself so this is the requirement and in note these are the condition they are met like a macrophage biological or biological less that is required a special separation that i understand that you can check it but other condition which you are writing and sometimes the nc come irregular ncs are coming from this facility the environmental conditions so this has to be taken care of when you putting this particular clause and writing your document manual or quality manual so 6.3.2 the requirements for facilities and environmental conditions necessary for the performance of the laboratory activities shall be documented so you document 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 the things in which temperature humidity or Uh, conditions i have to carry out these activities make a small table of all activities and put in this particular clause the laboratory shall monitor control and record so here the word is come record in previous clause we have put the word retained records so you have to maintain regular records of this thing but like a training that is coming the retained records environmental conditions in accordance with the relevant specifications method or procedures or here they influence the validity of the results so here the monitoring how you are monitoring people are uh, putting the uh, recording the three times in the morning in the lunch time or in the evening three times temperature humidity or pressure where the requirement is there in the procedure they are putting or they are putting a data bank it depends so this is called a monitoring and this condition people are taken advantage of the things they are not recording daily basis the requirement of the standard you have to put on daily basis all these three conditions on three times it can be two times depend upon your requirement and don't try to put if you are putting you are putting the ac on in the morning when you leave it starts at 9 o'clock don't put the time at 9 o'clock at least give two hours time to maintain the laboratory temperature and there are two environmental conditions one is the laboratory general conditions and one is for that particular procedure so how much variation per hour control how much you have to maintain the humidity per hour that is a different things but accordingly you have to monitor and record the environmental condition in your lab
measuring control facility shall have implemented monitored and periodically reviewed and shall include but not limited to assess and use of an affecting the laboratory activities prevention of contaminations interference or adverse influence on laboratory activities effective separations between the laboratory areas with compatible laboratory activities separations and other things are very important in the put in the laboratory and this is a requirement chemical laboratories or the where the toxic fumes are coming not be put other standards or other how you make in the facilities you must have a few mode with you most of exhaust fan other things this is called a facility you have to maintain and these are very important when you are doing the chemical experiments and the biological and nowadays many things are coming on the advanced stage of the biological structures genes dna then you have to take care of all these factors in your facilities and environmental conditions when the laboratory performs laboratory activities its sites or facilities outside is permanent control it shall ensure that the requirement related to its facilities and environmental conditions of these documents are met this is meant for this particular clause 6.3.5 is meant for site calibration definitely according to that you have to put in your quality manual or document manual smartly about this site calibration how you are taking care of which is meeting the requirement the documentation on your the accreditation body an accreditation body like nabl has written separate document for site calibration is nabl 130 so 6.4 clause is regarding the equipment now this particular standard first time the whole definition of the equipment has come the laboratory shall have access to equipment the now you have to write the language of access they say ki if you are showing some experiment and your experiment has uh, your instrument has got some problem so you can carry out you can borrow the instrument from some other lab and can show the activities show your competence yes we can do it but our accreditation bodies rules and regulations you could not do like that but this standards clause is allowed to you assess so they have used the word assess like in personal they use the word available this is not a compulsory condition ki you must have the ownership of the equipment you at least you know the equipment you can assess the equipment so this is the spirit of this particular standard but again i am telling you you have to follow the accreditation bodies rules and regulations which they have written already with particular clause so they says in rules and regulation in our accreditation body you can take the instrument for which has the least at least for 2 years so you could not bring the instrument today for show to the activities to the auditor you must have the written document for least at least for 2 years this is a requirement not of our accreditation body including but not limited to measuring instruments software measurements measurement standards reference materials reference data reagents consumables or auxiliary apparatus that is required for the correct performance of laboratory activities and it can influence the results so first time the complete definition of coming the equipment you see everything they mentioned as a definition of equipment previously it was not broadly given the there is equipment clause was there but not they giving the total definition of equipment everything reason uh, uh, reference material everything they have put in that as a come as a equipment so this is for the validation of the results they put the everything some people they are using consumable they don't say it is a part of equipment but in this particular clause they put it is a part of the uh, equipment a multitude or multitude of names exist 
for reference materials this is clause if uh, following the reference materials because previously in old standard reference material playing is not playing a very little role in the uh, addressing the things but this particular standard is putting lot of energy for the reference material so they have to meet with the particular standard of iso 1734 Uh, they have put there are a series of uh, documents for reference material and it is starting from 17031 to 17035 all these document related to the reference material if you more interested and in using the reference material then you have to follow this particular standards and iso guide 33 provide guidance on the selection of use of reference material so and guide 80 provides the guidance to reference material and these are things in equipment if you are more particular about the reference material so you have to address according to your document manual putting all these standard together as a reference document in your equipment clause when the laboratory uses equipment outside its permanent control it shall ensure that the requirements for equipment this document is met if the uh, equipment grows from your permanent site to a site or go to some other purpose all the condition of this document should be met means you have to make some what are the results we are giving and then instrument goes somewhere and then it is come back you have checked your instrument is okay everything is all right with your checklist so these are things you have to follow and these are the condition of this particular document that has to be met when your document your instrument is going outside the laboratory shall have procedure so this is the second procedure is coming in the 6.4 clause procedure for handling transport storage use and a plan maintenance of equipment in order to ensure proper functioning and the prevent contaminations or deterioration So these are the condition when you write your procedure. All these condition has to be mentioned in your procedure. So this is your procedure number two. The laboratory shall not verify the requirement conforms to specified requirement before being placed or return the equipment into service. so laboratory shall verify that i am told you when you take out the equipment you have to meet with the requirement of the document you have to verify what the result is showing and after coming back again the instrument you have to check which we have put as a common terminology in movement register when we taking anything outside from our to site calibration we have to check the performance of that particular equipment or artifact the equipment used for measurement shall be capable of achieving the measurement accuracy or the measurement of uncertainty required to provide valid results so you have to make some document that when you putting the equipment in service and what are your aim what your acceptance criteria and what are your aim for getting the cmc that you maintain a document when you put the document and when the you put the equipment in service measurement equipment shall be calibrated when the measurement accuracy or measurement uncertainty affects the validity of reported results and calibration of the equipment required to establish the metrological traceability of the reported results so they have uh, keep on your will whether the instrument has to be calibrated or not calibrated so you have to verify yes this instrument has to be sent because it is affecting the traceability chain of the results or validity of the results so that you have to decide type of equipments having effect on the validity of results effect the result of the reported results include those used for direct measurements of the 
measurement measurement of the like a balance performance a mass measurement so this is giving the example in the standard in this particular clause which equipment you have to send what are the effect they have shown some example also in this particular equipment those sent to take corrections for the measurements value with respect to example temperature measurements those used to obtain the measurement results calculated from multiple quantities so you have to decide they are not making you compulsory ki your instrument has to be calibrated for our accreditation body's point of view all equipments with the has to be calibrated on particular calibration interval that you have to decide this standard is saying ki the the for the person who is using it the laboratory who is using that equipment has to decide the next calibration interval but some equipment are necessary to calibrate they are giving the example of balance which has to be used the calibrated mass then balance as of the balance has to be done and temperature equipment electrical equipment electronics equipment and some there is annual guidelines or national physical laboratories guidelines which instrument has to be calibrated with a particular reference to the standard that has to be followed the laboratory shall establish a calibration program commonly known as a calibration schedule so you must have a calibration schedule with respect to the particular standard and the policies of your accreditation body and abl establish the calibration schedule which is called in this particular standard is mentioned calibration program you make a list of your equipments make a that this particular equipment is calibrated on this year and next will be calibrated on this year according to take can care of the particular things your experience standards nabl policies npl policies or aplec policies there is a document is p10 is there we giving the calibration interval but you have to decide you can not get life over lifetime nobody in no equipment can be remain every equipment has to be submit for calibration because this is my experience if i don't put the date for suggested date on the certificate the person will never come again for calibration so that has to be followed but you must have the calibration program and is initial part of your audit of your accreditation body all equipment requiring calibrations or which has a defined period of validity shall be labeled coded or otherwise identified to allow the user of the equipment to readily identify the status of calibrations or period of validity so all equipment should be labeled and with your id of your particular organizations so that has to be followed for all equipments equipment that has been subjected to overload or mishandling gives questionable results or has been shown to be defective or outside specified requirement shall be taken out of the service so that has to be put by separate uh, board on that thing this is out of service this is not usable not in use this column and if it is in the list of your equipment so minimum time you go for its rectification but it should be easily identified with all equipment which in the working mode which is in the non working mode if some equipment got a problem keep that equipment in your things with the there is not not in use or it is some problem is there and you have to clearly identify that equipment it shall be isolated or prevented use or clearly labeled or mark as being out of service until it has been verified to performance on the correctly so this is i have already told you have put separately that equipment the laboratory shall examine the effect of the defect or deviation from specified requirement and shall initiate the management of 
non conformance work procedures so this will be addressed in the special in 7.10 clause when intermediate checks are necessary to maintain confidence of the performance of the equipment these checks shall be carried out according to a procedure so intermediate check if it is necessary then make a plan of intermediate checks and write a procedure how will you do it you will check its repeatability what are your laws you take a Uh, it should be less than your cnc or you take the intermediate check which the instrument is already calibrated and after you uh, after three months again you check the instrument the same repeatability or same stability is coming or not there are different ways of checking the intermediate checks and but some parameters is really difficult to carry out the intermediate checks so according to your parameters you have to carry out the intermediate checks and you have to write some short procedures for carrying out this particular activity you have to carry out the procedure for intermediate check for that particular parameter when calibrations and reference materials data include reference values or correction factors the laboratory shall ensure that the reference values and the correction factors are updated and implemented in appropriate to meet the specified requirement so this is mainly concerned with the your reference material the laboratory shall have take practical measures to prevent unintended adjustments of the equipment from invalidating the results so when the equipment are calibrated they are done on specified some limits so don't interfere with that thing some people are put the lack also when the uh, changing screws so that has to be taken care of if you doing adjustment of that particular instrument your calibration becomes null and void so this is uh, 6.413 record shall be retained for equipment which can influence laboratory activities the record shall include the following where applicable so you have to make the all the records which is called a instrument history this is called a equipment history that is the main important point of this particular clause generally known the people known of laboratory equipment history you have to maintain and it should be called in the retained record so this is the the identity of equipments including software and firmware version the manufacturing's name type identifications and serial number or other unique identifications evidence of verification of equipment on conforms to with specified requirement the current location calibrate date results of calibrations adjustments acceptance criteria and the due date of the next calibrations or the calibrations interval documentations of reference materials if you don't have the reference material don't address it the maintenance plan and maintenance carried out to date where relevant to the performance of the equipment details of the damage malfunctioning modifications to the repairs of the equipment so these are the important you have to make a history of that thing and when you are sending the equipment don't carry out any calibration activities like your thermometer is valid only for one year when you are doing the things so you could not do the perform the activities put the entry in your equipment history register if we have sent that particular equipment for calibration do a multiple equipment if you got then you can work more efficiently so that has to be taken care of when you making the equipment history ankur so thank you very much for
covering my clauses 5 6.1 6.2 6.3 and 6.4 thank you very much sir for your kind uh, presentation and uh, detailed description of these clauses 5 plus 5 plus 6 to 1.6.1 to 6.4 6.4 was a uh, some difficult and big uh, big class in which a lot of things you have explained very well thank you very much sir we are thankful that uh, all the i hope that most of the things are very clear and tomorrow during this panelist are uh, about half an hour question answer session you will be available we are getting some questions in the chat box we will discuss thank tomorrow you. so sir thank you very much but sir i think uh, i would like not like to take you very fast uh, even after tomorrow you have the session at 10 o'clock i'm sorry at 11 yeah. o'clock yeah 11 o'clock if you will say we yeah, can okay. start at 10:30 with the uh, participants interest and uh, so that you, you can give you one hour at 10:30 yes sir I easily i can be free then at 10:30 we start will i free easily yeah thank you very much sir. so tomorrow we will start at 10:30 in place of uh, 11 so that you will be having one and a half hour thank you very much sir now we are just going for uh, i think it is 1:30 so uh, in place of uh, one hour lunch i think we should uh, break it for half an hour or 45 minutes what do you suggest sir 45 minutes is enough i think for uh, 45 minutes will be okay so okay so what we will do sir we will meet at 2:15 now all the participants 215 thank you very much for all the participants sure. all the uh, my chief guest my guest of honor and the speakers uh, experts from the field for this uh, nice uh, uh, starting of this session thank you very much sir again we are meeting at 215 after 45 minutes and the session will be continuing for 2 hours that means up now in place of 4 the next session next session will end at 415 thank you very much sir thank you thank you right thank you sir system it is requested to kindly uh, throw some light on the uh, clauses which uh, we have requested from you you now to, uh, over to you ma'am please uh thank you ashutosh ji for the kind words i'm glad that i've been given this opportunity to discuss uh, and touch upon these clauses from the standard i hope i'll be able to do justice with this uh, in the one hour three clauses in one hour so i'll try to uh, make it more uh, informative in terms of uh, having uh, to embed uh, so that it gets embedded uh, it's always good to have a, a two way conversation but i understand the format is like that you know i'll be speaking and if anybody is having in question i understand that it can be uh, put in the chat box and later it will be taken up and addressed so uh, i just hope uh, it goes well and uh, first and foremost i really wanted to uh, discuss is the the whole objective around this uh, standard compliance when it comes to any iso standard what we really wanted to do is to fulfill and to comply with the requirement of those standard uh, those standard be it iso 9001 be it 14001 uh, 18001 45001 etc so uh, but we need to understand one thing what is our objective when we are uh, we when we have a laboratory in place uh, the objective is to test a product i'm basically i'm from a testing laboratory background so i'll be uh, apologies if you feel that you know my examples are more from the testing laboratories uh, so then um, uh, what is our objective when we have a testing or calibration laboratory specific to the testing laboratory what we are, what is our objective the objective is to test the sample and give the accurate and reliable result this is the most important uh, thing we are supposed to do and uh, you know getting profit out of it is the consequences of that activity so but the point is every time whenever you are you want to comply with any clause of the standard any activity around the laboratory you just think uh, think about what exactly is the purpose of uh, uh, your activity so i'll keep saying that the highlight is testing a product and giving accurate and reliable result that's a key point but when it comes to uh, uh, the uh, this main activities this is the thing which is being done at the laboratory by the people who are involved in there so uh, so when you look at the standard all the related uh, aspects of that for this activity will be there which has been uh, Uh, mentioned in a structured manner and uh, elaborated upon and which are those activities which are critical to this main activity made mandatory so whenever you see shell word in the standard you'll realize that this needs to be done it is mandatory 
Right. And others are not necessarily mandatory, but it's good practices. If you, you can you know, have a way around it, but it's good to do that. So from here, I'll move forward to the specific clause. When it comes to the, uh, this clause 6.1, uh, again, the main activity is to test the product and give the accurate reliable result. We have resources who will be test, uh, people will be testing it, will be having equipment, will be having a product and it will be tested and report will be submitted. But there are things which will not be done by the laboratory itself. So there are things which need to be done by the external provider. So who all are can be those external provider. So it don't go by that, you know, 6.1 is a clause. We need to go by one to one. If you look around it and think logically, it makes really sense. The standard makes sense. It's not a dry uh, topic or dry piece of paper we are reading and just like that we want to follow because, you know, we need to be compliant with that. So we need to be very, very logical when we are talking about uh, this uh, main activity of testing a product. And, you know, we need to get things done from the other people. Like if you are testing, you'll be having equipment, you'll be buying equipment from somebody uh, once you buy the equipment, you need to have the maintenance in place when, and of course it's not being done by the laboratory. And if you have the equipment, you'll be look, uh, looking for the calibration part of it. And maybe sometime you'll be looking for training, uh, services as well, you know, for the awareness purposes in terms of 17025 or be the technical training, be the equipment related training. So all these can not, ne not necessarily be done by the laboratory. So it needs to be done by the external provider. So when we think around it, so what all need to be done for the, for that uh, uh, specific aspect of our testing laboratory activity or calibration laboratory activity. So we need to understand if uh, logic makes sense, you know, when you are looking for any external provider, I'm talking about 6.61. Uh, when you are talking about the external provider who are providing the activities like calibration, equipment, training, those kind of thing. So what kind of, uh, external provider you will be looking for it makes sense it has to be somebody competent performance is better and you know those kind of things you'll be looking for so that because you know when you look for the when you think about the iso standards all the iso standard it's it's based on the system approach what do you mean by the system approach system approach wherein all processes are interrelated they interact with each other and uh, result to the and lead to the result so better the interaction, better are the individual processes are, the outcome would be the better. So these, this is also a process where, you know, external provider is providing some activity to the main activity. So if we have a competent provider, services are good, so it, a result would be good. So we'll have a, if we go by the clause 6.6.1, it says we need to ensure, shall ensure, of course it goes without saying, unless we have a competent external provider, and uh, correct uh, having a you know suitable activity in there as a services uh, will not be able to give a correct result. So uh, we laboratory shall ensure that only suitably externally provided product and services that affect laboratory activities are used. That makes sense. It's just that in a written in a dry language maybe, but that makes sense. We'll be looking for somebody who provides uh, logical services which are for meant for our activities. And, and see, makes sense. So uh, another aspect, if you look at the detail of this clause, if you look at it, if you say we are, of course, as a laboratory are serving the customer, so it should serve the customer's requirement as well. It should not be you know, something beyond it. So we'll be looking because our purpose is testing is uh, testing the product for the customer. So that needs to be addressed as well. And it should support the operation of laboratory. And this is the broad around it 6.6.1 if you look at it if you look at 6.6.2 now the point is the it makes sense that we should have uh, we should use external service provider which is competent and etc etc that is the idea behind it but we should have a procedure and retain record why we call, talk about procedure and retain record when it comes to ISTO standard it uh, it this is again, it is not person specific, people specific. It talks about system. It says you need to have a procedure so that uh, probably suppose if I'm the one who's testing at the laboratory and knows in and out around of every activity in the lab. And because of ABCD reason, if I'm not there in the lab, there should be somebody who knows it, but it's not necessarily 
to know by heart it needs to have a something to look up to so it has to be a procedure now again it says the shell word that has to have the procedure because this originate from the system approach it originates from you know you need to have the uh, documented procedure wherein uh, it, it speaks about what will be the criteria how will you know how will you review the external provider services what will be criteria of evaluation and you know how you will establish can establish that it conforms to laboratory's requirement action taking action uh, arising out of the evaluation or monitoring performance mm -hmm. and evaluation so these kind of things are there it's it's a big makes sense it's all logical it's not you know something has been uh, forced upon on people so when you have a procedure which says everything you know clearly anybody who know new joining or when somebody else comes and you know start working on it knows it what are supposed to be done what what the laboratory had decided to do for this aspect so it should be clearly written down so that it can be followed up even by the new person or you know somebody who is not working for that activity so that was this thing when you do you have a procedure then you talk about the retention of the record also that needs to be done you need to ensure if this is this again i always uh, uh, say that you know don't go by that you know uh, it's as if you know you need to comply with the standard you need to get the accreditation and you need to apply for something for regulatory uh, compliances i always say look for the quality of the output so when you're looking for the quality of output to understand whatever has been mentioned it's meant for the quality of the output so if you look at it you have a procedure so that you know somebody comes so, you know there is no gap or when somebody else is there performance doesn't get uh, uh, you know devalued that way or uh, and then when we talk about the retention of record is to ensure the trail not for the audit audit is just a part of larger picture trail to ensure that whatever we've been doing was right and uh, to take a decision on it suppose if i say when uh, that you know uh, you are doing the criteria of evaluation you see over a period of time you've been maintaining record for you know 5 6 years for example for a uh, specific supply you realize that performance is deteriorating so you realize that you need to take action on it it's not for the audit i always say it's not for the audit it's for our own performance so we need to have a record to take a decision on it you know you never know what may come up so but you need to decide what would be the retention period for you so when it and now i specifically go to the i'll go to the procedure so first and foremost we should have a, we should define and uh, we should have defining reviewing approving the laboratory's requirement for externally provided product and services for example if you are i'm from the petroleum i have worked with the petroleum laboratories so we need to have who all will be providing for example the glass for example equipment you know who will be uh, what will be the criteria for that will be reviewing that you know uh, how, what is the performance and you know in the larger perspective sometimes you look at the stability of financial stability of the company as well just you know they can provide that act, act just so and then next part is defining the criteria for evaluation just a second yeah sexy part for the procedure is defining the criteria of evaluation selection monitoring of the performance at evaluation of performance it's not just a part of the standard it's require it need to, to be done for the external provider so that we can understand who which one uh, which uh, supplier is better for specific purpose so that we can take a decision you know we can we need to take that uh, services from that supplier and we can reevaluate uh, regularly see as i already said you know we need to monitor over a period of time how is it performing do we need to do away with that supplier or do we need to uh, take only that supplier based on that performance so that kind of thing and when it comes to selection also is it suitable for our activity and sometime you know if you change the scope increase the scope also you need to have some uh, provider which suits to our business kind of thing so that kind of thing needs to be done that makes sense it's all logical and then the ensuring that externally provided product and services conform to the laboratory's established requirement or when applicable to the relevant requirement of the document before they are used or directly provided to the customer so it comes to again you know it makes sense again you know 
if somebody you are hiring for some activity needs to uh, needs to follow our requirement because we are hiring you or you know just as we need to provide services to customers so it's customers requirement that logical and the fourth part is taking action arising from the evaluation monitoring performance and evaluation of the external provider so you decide this is the de here comes the decision making when you evaluate monitor the performance so those kind of thing if for example if you say that you know if the performance criteria uh, is 50 percent and if that uh, supplier doesn't uh, achieve that 50 percent what will be you taking the action on uh, maybe maybe you'll not use it or you'll give the warning or some whatever it's all up to you standard it's very very uh, uh you know uh I would say it's quite relaxed or flexible when it comes to the activity, the uh, activity of the laboratory, especially in this latest standard, which is you know now conforms to the uh, uh, follow the framework of nine thousand one. So it's it all depends what is the requirement of the laboratory, how it want to comply it, but main important thing which is critical for its activity needs to follow thoroughly. So that is essential. As I said, wherever shall you need to do that. So here comes the. 6.6. So now the third part is you have thought over who will be your external provider and, and you have a procedure. You retain the record, how it will be evaluated and other things related to the external provider. Now you need to talk to them, you know. Which needs to, which services need to be provided? What will be the acceptance guide? Because so far you have done it at your level. Now you're talking to the provider. You know what needs to be done. So now it comes to the communication with the external provider. You'll talk. You'll communicate what is the requirement for product and services. So far you've been using um, specific level, uh, you know, grade of chemical. Now you want a different grade of chemical. So you need to provide that kind of information. Makes sense, no? Unless you don't provide that information, you'll get that kind of services. So, and miscommunication is very common when it comes to businesses. And then in the uh, acceptance criteria, obviously you'll say that unless you get that kind of performance, you'll not accept that product. It's, it doesn't, uh, you know, it's not, uh, it's not very, uh, uh, you know, uh, different to the laboratory system in our daily lives. Also, what we, uh, what we generally do is, you know, even if you buy a microwave, anything you buy, you know it. Unless it performs that way, I'll not accept. You'll return it. You'll do something, you know, you'll not use it. So that's a that's a thing is applicable for the external provider as well. And then competency, including any required qualification of the personnel for the specific activities. If it requires any kind of qualification competence, you'll mention that, you know, that needs to be done. You know, it's just that, you know, somebody is if you know, if uh, if look at the medical side, medical laboratory, if uh, the qualification needs to be the MBBS, you just can't uh, accept that somebody engineer does it. You know, you need to mention it's very logical, so it's nothing you know uh, rocket science something which needs to be taken that way. And the D part is activities that laboratory or its customer intend to perform at external providers' premises. So that needs to be communicated that if uh, what kind of laboratory what kind of active laboratory is going to do at the uh, intent to perform an external providers and i think uh ashutosh this uh, activity will be done later on isn't isn't it if you want to continue right now you can do it now otherwise uh, after completing the next clause you can come back it come back on it yeah because you know it has all meteorological traceability other things are okay. also there Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'll, I'll go to the yeah, another go. clause then. Please. So now comes the next uh, clause, which is seven point one. We have spoken about last in the last clause. Uh, I have spoken about. Uh, who all those who will be you know giving sub, giving these services support services to my main activity how we'll be dealing it with that so that was one thing now it talks about for about the customer's requirement now we are talking about review of request tenders and contracts kind of thing you know where we are talking about 
if somebody approaches us for a b c d activities how we were going to discuss about it how we'll ensure that it is with time so since it is very very critical sometimes it has a legal uh, obligation as well sometimes it has implications as well you know if you just like that test a product you don't mention what exactly is there and you know there is a case afterward then you'll be liable uh, you'll have a liability for that so again it has a shell word so we need to have a procedure for that so to review request and then contract we need to have a procedure specifically mention what all needs to be done so it says The procedure shall ensure that the requirements are adequately defined, documented, understood. Makes sense again. It's very simple. It says, you know, it needs to be there clearly. And BEZ Laboratory has a capability and resources to meet the requirement. It should ensure that we have, uh, if customer has requested for testing of the water sample and you don't have that, uh, you've been doing it, uh, something else, you've been doing metal testing, for example, this, it's a quite gross, but example, but then this is how it is. You should have that competence to do it. And sometimes if you have a capability of water for the, uh, for the drinking water, but you don't have a capability of a uh, swimming pool or something like that, you know, you need to convey it clearly. And then there is where external providers are used, the requirement are applied and the laboratory advises the customer of specific laboratory activities to be performed by external provider and gains the customer's approval. So it may again, it uh, clearly says whenever you're using somebody, uh, any external provider as a subcontractor, so you need to convey it clearly to the customer that this is how, this is what you've been using it and, and get the approval first, unless the customer is satisfied, agrees to it, not, it, sh it should not be used. And the appropriate method or procedures are selected and are capable of meeting the customer's requirement. Again, this says, you know, about if you have, if you're using the specific method, if it talks, for example, for any test, testing of a product, if you, uh, you are uh, compliant with the ISM, IS method, which is different to the ASTM method, but customer requires for the ASTM to be able to clearly convey this, because otherwise it will be a confusion. There will be, you know, uh, issues afterwards. So it's always good to have a clarity on this beforehand. And if you look at the next clause, which is 7.1.2, uh, it makes again sometimes you know customer can come and ask for the uh, testing of product with uh, as per some specific standard which may be outdated, which is not the correct one. So as a knowledgeable person or as a uh, as an expert in your own field, you can you need to convey, and, you know, you are the one who will be doing the job. So you need to convey that this is not the appropriate one. So uh, this is basically to ensure that the correct things are done, correct activities being done. The product is tested to the correct test method, correct uh, appropriate people uh, are involved in testing and right kind of result can be given, which is accurate and reliable. So that can be done. So you need to convey before and again, it's shell that's need to be done. And then when it comes, another clause is when the customer requests a statement of conformity to a specification or standard for test or calibration, for example, pay, pass, fail, intolerance, auto tolerance. I'm sorry, your next slide is not there. Kindly change oh, the slide, please. Oh. So this is it. Uh, then the when the customer requests a statement of conformity to a specification or standard for the test or calibration, for example, pass or fail, intolerance and out of tolerance, the specification or standard and the decision rule shall be clearly defined unless inherent in the requested specification or standard, the decision rule selected shall be communicated to and agreed with the customer. So again, uh, if you are uh, if you are taking a job from a customer for testing a product or calibrating equipment or something like that then you need to have a clarity what exactly it's his or her expectation is if he or she require uh, uh, requires research rule and will you be able to provide that kind of information so you need to have a clarity on it and before getting into the job of testing or calibrating the equipment you need to have that approved clearly understood by both the parties so that needs to be done and then if you look at 7.1.4, any differences between the request or the tender? 
and the contract shall be resolved before laboratory's activities commence. Again, it's not a something which is uh, very diff uh, very difficult or something which is illogical. It, it's clearly says whenever you do any activity, any business activity, before that you need to have a clear cut uh, contract, clear cut uh, understanding that what needs to be done by both the parties. Uh, you know there should not be confusion around it that you know uh, customer thought A and you know provider thought B, and then result would be something else, and there would be a uh, uh, issues uh, out of it, and you never know can be a legal implication out of it. So you need to have a clarity on that. And then 7.1.5 says a customer shall be informed of any deviation from the contract. Uh, preferably, uh, normally it doesn't happen, but you know, if it happens, for example, if you don't have uh, the purse uh, that put it at the time of contract, for example, you have all the uh, facility available, everything was there, you know, uh, and you both the parties agreed to it and you took the job. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, for example, if that competent person is not there, because of health reason, whatever reason is not that you, this is a deviation you need to say, convey. No, this kind of thing which has happened after the contract, you need to convey that deviation. And then if contract, and once there is a deviation, which is not necessarily a very major one, but even small beat or timeline also, if the customer asks to uh, report in three days and you feel that, you know, you'll be able to do it in the five days, that's a deviation, you'll then make sense. You need to convey clearly that you'll be doing it that way. If a contract is amended after work has commenced, the contract review shall be repeated and any amendment shall be communicated to all the affected persons. So it may sense whatever is the, what are the changes to, to be, it need to be conveyed to all the people involved in that. And then comes the 7.1.7. 7. The laboratory shall cooperate with customers or their representative in clarifying the customer's request and in monitoring laboratory's performance in relation to work perform. perform. So again, now the customer is a, and in, in today's time, customer is the main or you know key person we need to uh, make happy. So if we need to come uh, cooperate with them and their representative so that we have, we can provide the all the clarification to their request. Uh, and you know, also in the monitoring of the request for, you know, coming and uh, witnessing the test, we need to, we should do that. And so uh, if you go through the ISRO standard, there is a underlying current about procedure records. So it's always there uh, when it comes to, in uh, you know, shell related uh, procedure, uh, shell related clauses, you know, you need to have a procedure. So once you have procedure, so based on that, you'll be generating record also. So once you regenerate the record, you need to retain it for the specified period you said you will be doing it. So, and here I would like to clarify what is a record. May Sometimes we get confused with format with record, document with record. So when we say record, anything having a data on it is the record. If you have made one form, simple form, that is a form or format, right? But if you add something in some information, sign it and you know, do it, that becomes a record and you need to keep it. If blank form is there, it's not relevant for any decision making. But if there is a record that, you know, filled in form, then you use that. So, so we need to review record of, we need to have that record of reviews, including any significant changes shall be retained. Record shall also be retained for pertinent discussion with the customer relating to customer's requirement or the result of the laboratory activities. So when you are looking at this clause, we understand that how we are we will be dealing with the customer. There should be clarity at the laboratory level what we are supposed to do. There's a clarity what we'll be communicating to customer. There's a clarity around it once that uh, a discussion is done with the customer, mm -hmm. approval is done, we'll be doing that job. And if there is a change in the job, we'll be communicating clearly and we'll ensure that information mm -hmm. is retained for longer period so that we, mm -hmm. we can take a decision on this, we can monitor our progress, we can see mm -hmm. how things are going. Mm -hmm. So next clause is 7.2, that will be taken up with by Mr. Mohakar. So, so, 
So this is uh, whenever we are talking about 6.6 .6 and 7.1, they are very, very critical ones. When it comes to laboratories activities, we need to understand how we'll be doing it and uh, give it a clear thought how it will be done so and make it, uh, uh, you know, documented. Now comes the 7.3 sampling. So sampling is uh, the area, um, I hope most of you, you will be knowing sampling, you know, whenever you are, again, uh, if you look at the larger picture, what is our object as a laboratory is to test a product and give accurate, reliable result. So when you are testing the product, we need to have that product in which format form you have, you will be having that product. So, you know, how will you be getting that sample, the word sample? So when we are talking about sampling, if any laboratory is doing this sampling. So in that case, sampling needs to have this because uh, the sample is critical to the result. So then this, if laboratory is following something uh, sampling, then it has to have follow the procedure, proper guidelines to get that sample. So if you talk about it, uh, we need to have a sampling plan how to do that and the laboratory shall have a sampling plan and method when it carries out sampling of the substances material or product for subsequent testing or calibration so uh, again i'll quote the petroleum laboratories example you we might have seen the large tanks the, on the depots so you have thousands of, uh, not lakhs of liter of uh, petrol, for example, in that tank. If you take the sample from the top, it will be different to what it will be at the bottom or the mid. So that uh, test, if we test the top of the sample, it will not be representative of the complete lot. So if we are doing the sampling, we'll have a IS or ISO method, uh, which talks about the specific product sampling. And you'll be doing, for example, in petroleum, you do top, bottom, middle, and you know, make it average and do it, do the testing. So that needs to be followed properly. You need to have that specific equipment. When you do the sampling, you need to have that sampling mm -hmm. bottle specific uh, to the uh, sampling. So that needs to be followed. The sampling method shall address the factor to be controlled to ensure the validity or of subsequent testing or calibration result. So again, when we are saying the test sampling method, we it need to ensure that it is, it's ensure the validity of say, testing. As I said, when it comes to petroleum, probably the top product would be different, the middle would be all the more different, and bottom would be altogether different. So we need to ensure that whatever the method we are choosing, has to be appropriate so that it ensure the validity of the product which should be representative of the lot the sampling plan and method shall be available at the site where sampling is undertaken and again it says shell it if you are following the sampling it says as a part of your activities then it has to you have to have the plan and method available at the site of course you know when you are taking the sampling you need to know everything so it should not be you now you're gone for the sampling but you don't know the uh, process and then again and then the sampling plan shall whenever a reasonable be based on the appropriate statical statistical method so many a times those sampling plan are based on the statistical method it's not necessarily always so if it is there you need to check uh, whether it's relevant to your activity and accordingly follow it if you need to follow that statistical method so next is uh, 7.3.2, which speaks about the sa sampling method shall describe. Now, if we give a thought for a second, if which way, which method we are doing the sampling. So it that should have all the in, uh, important aspect. So, so this clause says sampling method shall describe selection of samples or the sites, be the sampling plan, the preparation and treatment of sample from a substance, material or product, to yield the required item for subsequent testing or calibration. When you look at the environmental testing, you need to do this, uh, you know, uh, treatment of the sample and then afterward do the testing. So that needs to be done. These are the specific and important aspect of uh, sampling method. So it it should uh, describe that. So that needs to be there. Now, 
then comes the 7.3.3 which talks about the retention of record again uh, whatever your activity you are doing just to ensure that there is a trail there is information and that inform based on that if there is any decision making whatever could this decision making could be anything so you need to uh, need to retain those record and again it's a shell so it need to it has to be done so here uh, it says the laboratory shall retain records of sampling data that forms part of the testing or calibration that is undertaken these records shall include where relevant first is reference of the standing uh, sampling method used date and then uh, again makes sense you need to have that information therein and date and time of sampling unless you don't mention that sampling method that will not help whoever looks afterward or for the decision making purpose or you know information around it will not be able to make it. and then date and time of sampling it's very important and logical as well of course when it was done probably the way there was the reason or you know to make decision out of it why something has happened if something incorrect happens if correct happens you probably will not might you might not look back again but when it comes to any decision making when things have gone here so you will look for things you know date and time of the sampling data to identify and describe the sample number for example number amount name so that information should be there what kind of you know how many samples were you kept you know the guy what how many kgs you have taken for example in the cold sample how much you have taken that kind of thing information should be there then comes the identification of personal performing the sampling so of course we need to mention there in in the that record that who has done it so that we are aware that person was competent equipped for doing that activity so that needs to be there and uh, for example if even if we found the, the person was competent if you feel that there was some mistake or some thing has happened so you can take a uh, corrective action on that be probably the you know refresher course training something like that so it can be done and then comes the environmental or transport condition so of course uh, there is if there is sample needs to be taken and for example if i'll quote again for the patrol that needs to be kept at a temperature specific temperature if it is kept on a high temperature a higher temperature that it will get evaporated and that whole characteristic of the product will change so this is valid for other uh, testing methods also and transport condition that's a environment or transport condition and then comes the g it talks about the diagram or other equivalent means to identify the sampling location when appropriate again specific to the specific activity it might be relevant for your activity or not if it is relevant you need to have that information just to ensure that whatever sampling activities has been done was accurate and if there is a division you can find out from that record just to correct over afterwards so that needs to be there and then H is the deviation addition to or exclusion from the sampling method and sampling plan. So anything which will be will be the deviation from the activity will be uh, mentioned therein. So this is a broad idea, right? So these I hope I did that justice. When it comes to these three uh, clauses, we need to be very very clear on that about what exactly as the laboratory we are looking for and uh, document the procedure and then do the activity and retain, retain the record that needs to be done very very clearly so i believe uh, ashutosh ji i have broadly covered the uh, area if uh, any question uh, as the format uh, says that you know uh, there will be a chat box and uh, in question would be there so i'll be addressing those question if there is any i hope uh, that clarifies the content thank you very i'm much. quite ahead of I'm quite ahead of time, looks like. No, no, thank you very much, ma'am, for your kind words. You have actually explained the requirements of this standard in a very well manner. Actually, you know, this, uh, if we talk about this standard, you have very well explained that this standard speaks for calibration, testing, and sampling. Mm -hmm. Sampling is also added over here. And, uh, you know, you will be surprised to know in the legal metrology, because we are the legal metrology people, and mm -hmm. in the legal metrology, since 1977, we are having a complete sampling plan. 
when we oh. enter a factory and if I, whether it's a package commodity or something else, we have a complete uh, complete system. If we are having going to take the sample of a package less than four thousand, we used to take thirty two samples. And if it is yeah. more than four thousand, we used to take eighty samples. So it's complete statistics and how yeah. to take it from which corner you have to take the complete rules in not yeah. in, not the actually st standard. It's a rule. Complete rules are made for the okay. sampling plan. So we are yeah. doing it under the legal methodology, and I hope that laboratories must also be aware of that. How much sample has to take? What is the statistical data? How statistically you have to take? So I'm uh, I'm thankful to you for your converse. And tomorrow you yeah, when you will be doing your uh, another portion. Tomorrow you will be doing. And at the end of this uh, tomorrow uh, tomorrow session, we will be having the question answers. What's what I mentioned in the chat box, and maybe the uh, participants will be doing it or preparing it today after this complete program and. We will be having a relook of this whole uh, program with what's over the clauses we are covering today tomorrow morning if the participants agree we will start at uh, because 10 30 i have to give the time to uh, professor anil kumar from 10 30 to 12 because he's asking some more time one and a half hour and uh, we will start try to start at 10 o'clock so that within this half an hour we can just recoup all the discussions which we have done today and uh, we can just yeah. have a refresh of all the clauses thank you very much for your kind words thank you and for explaining thank this you. take your help in future also whenever you are free we will take your help thank you very thank much you the, thank you for the opportunity given thank, thank you, you so much thank you very much ma'am now uh, basically in the since morning uh, we are doing this and uh, i think uh, Santosh ji, kindly uh, allow Butter Singh ji to uh, share his screen. Now, we have with us uh, my great friend, Mr. Butter Singh. And uh, as we are all aware, he is an ex uh, or former ex joint director of NABL. He has done a lot of assessments, a lot of technical experience he has in testing, calibration, assessment, accreditation body in NABL. And uh, he has more than 20 years of experience in different different organizations like IK, uh, AYKY Electronics, Belge, Bharti, Amatech, and so on. So we will, uh, we have a lot of, we have a very good uh, experienced person who not only knows about the accreditation activities, but also, but also, okay, mm -hmm. Santosh ji, are you listening me? Uh, we will be taking, taking his help. Santoshi. So we will request him to explain the clauses. Thank you. So he will be he will be discussing with us about the clauses, uh, clause 7.4, 7.5, 7.6, .7 and 7.7. .7. Actually, since morning, what we have, mm -hmm. since morning, what we have discussed, if we just go through it uh, one by one, actually, uh, in the beginning, we have discussed the clause 5, is structural requirements, which Professor Anil Kumar has discussed, which speaks about the legal identity, then what the it will define the management under clause 5.2, then laboratory 5.2, Three it speaks that it will be having defining the document and the range of laboratory activities. What activities laboratory will form, perform? Clause five point four speaks about the activities which will how these activities will be carried out to meet the requirements of the standard and document etc. Similarly, under clause five point five, they have made some clause some conditions for the laboratory how it will perform. And uh, then we, in another clause 5.6, we have discussed about the personal and their responsibilities. In clause 5.7, we have discussed about the laboratory management, what it has to ensure and what will be the responsibility of the laboratory management. So this is the complete 5.5 clause 5 under which the structural requirements of a laboratory have been explained in a proper way. Tomorrow when they're doing this recall, we will discuss it. Now I'm just uh, uh, taking over this uh, to uh, Shri Bhattal Singh Ji, who will be uh, telling us about the clauses sir, from clause 4.5. Sir, are you able to see? Yes, I'm able to see. Please. <laughs> Yes, 
शेयर तो हो गया था और दर एवरी शेयर फ्रॉम हियर नहीं शेयर तो हो गया हां मैंने ये बताया इसको ऊपर करना है basically the purpose of this standard is how to uh, do the calibration or testing work the most important part is performing the testing calibration and sampling yeah. in place of just issuing a single piece of paper how we can actually do the calibration or testing yeah, it is more important yeah. as the standard actually okay. requires oh, yes, sir. the testing and calibration now over to shri bhatta singh please ashutosh uh, sir thank you very much for such a nice introduction and uh, inviting me to deliver a talk about uh, this particular standard as we are uh, discussing many thing since morning that this particular standard is meant for testing and calibration laboratories including sampling sampling is uh, nothing but it's a part of uh, calibration and testing so now till now we have covered uh, up to 7.3 now we will cover 7.4 it is basically handling of test and calibration item so you know the final result of any laboratory are depend upon how you are handling the test or calibration items because if you are receiving some testing and calibration item that has to be handled properly and if you see the procedure required for handling test or calibration item and this particular procedure is Uh, includes transportation recept handling protection storage retention and disposal or return of the test and calibration item items as far as transportation is concerned it depend upon the type of instrument or type of material if instrument is rugged then requirement for the transportation will be different for example you are having a weight box you can transport it very easily but if you are having the volumetric vessels pipet burette or uh, measuring cylinder then requirement for the transportation will be different so the requirement of the transportation depend upon the type of instrument if there is a delicate uh, electronic instrument then they can be different similarly once you get any item for testing or calibration then you have to recept it once you have to recept it you must have a procedure how you will recept it you will uh, give him a number uh, to particular uh, testing or calibration item then you will uh, ensure the you will write date name of the party and the requirement of the testing or calibration for example you have received a weight box so you have to calibrate each and every weight whether it's a even class or d2 class similarly if you have received a pressure gauge then what are the point on which you have to uh, do the calibration then handling handling means once you are getting any uh, testing or calibration item you have to handle it properly because if you will not handle it properly it may deteriorate there can be a damage or there can be loss of the product or uh, loss of the uh, calibration or testing item then protection you must have a plan for the protection you must have a procedure for the prote protection if you are getting any uh, item for example you have receive uh, uh, cement for testing and you, if you have put it in the open then you are compromising with the protection because if in the night there is a rainfall the sample will get off so you have to take care of the protection then storage storage is also very very important for example you have receive a uh, any product which needs to be kept at uh, 20 plus minus 2 and you are keeping it uh, at 40 degree plus minus 2 or 45 degree then the results will not be the required result then retention retention means after testing or calibration in case of calibration you are uh, of course you are 100% return to the customer but in uh, in case of testing you have to retain that particular item if you see for example a steel rod or a steel bar they will give you three steel bars you will only conduct testing on one bar and two you will keep with you because if in future there is any uh, dispute about the testing or uh, where it is finally used they may ask you please retest our uh, this particular product then you have to retrieve it so you have to make the procedure 
you have to make the procedure so that you can get it. You can get it if it is required. Then dispose of disposal of the retained uh, testing uh, items. Then you have you have a uh, plan for disposal because you cannot keep a particular testing item for whole life. You must have to dispose it off after three months, after four months, after six months. Or sometimes there is a uh, um, standards, there, there is a specification up to when you have to keep it. Then if you see, you have to avoid the deterioration. Deterioration is nothing but there is some damage or there is some deformation. So you have to avoid it by following the procedure for the handling of uh, testing calibration item. Then contamination means if there are two chemicals or uh, something, uh, two different materials, if you if they come in the contract to each other, there can be contamination. So if the material which is uh, received for uh, testing, they need to be keep separately. Then you have to avoid the loss or damage because if the product is damaged, then you may not uh, perform the testing or calibration. For example, you have received a thermometer and anyhow it broke. So you, you will not be able to perform the calibration. So you have to keep safe. You have to avoid the damage of the testing or calibration item. Then handling instructions provide with the item followed. For example, Is it audible to all? Yes, it's Am I audible to all? Hello? Okay, then once you get any item for testing or calibration, you might get instructions which needs to be followed. So a laboratory has to follow all these instructions because if laboratory will not follow those instructions, then there can be a deviation in the results. For example, one particular uh, calibration has to be performed at 20 plus minus 2. Let's say in the field of time mission and we are performing it at uh, 29 or 30 and the uh, measurement uncertainty is 2 micron that you will might not get the exact results. So you have to uh, follow the instructions which were provided by the customer. Now the system for unambiguous identification of the item. If there is a small laboratory, might be they will get one or two or three similar uh, item for the testing and calibration. But if there is a big laboratory, for example, they are getting uh, hundreds of samples. So if there is not an identification method with them, then they can be mixed up. So what is required? They must be identified uniquely. And if they can divide them date-wise and their uh, parameter-wise, then it, it will be better for the laboratory to perform their task, perform testing and calibration. Now, deviation from a specified conditions upon reset shall be recorded. This is very, very crucial because many a time it has been seen that there is a conflict between the laboratory and the customer. Customer is saying when I, I have uh, transported that particular material, it was in good condition, it was working, but now you are saying it is not working. So if you find there is any deviation in the specified condition of a testing or calibration item, that has to be recorded or it is better because laboratory knows very well that if we are getting particular item and there is a chances of damage. So once you open it, please make video clip. Video clip will help you to avoid the conflict between the laboratory and the customer. Or if there is any uh, deviation, that has to be consulted with the customer so that you can perform your uh, testing or calibration. If there is deviation, sometime customer may ask that we will deposit, uh, we will submit another uh, 
testing or calibration item and sometimes they may ask that you please perform uh, testing or calibration in that case you have to you have to uh, make the disclaimer in the report for example a analog pressure gauge is received for the calibration and its zero is out the range of that particular pressure gauge is 700 and discount is 10 kg but it is showing around 5 kg deviation so you must have to consult with the customer and that must be mentioned in the in the report the That's zero the error is 5 kg per centimeter square so these kind of things needs to be taken care to avoid the conflict now uh, maintain monitor record specified environmental condition the meaning of this particular sub clause is if you have received some test or calibration item and that has to be kept at a particular or a specified environmental condition those conditions must be maintained monitored recorded and that record has to be kept because it can be asked by the customer it can be asked by the uh, acquisition body or by the assessor so these are the record which needs to be maintained and once you maintain all these things then only the results will be comparable results will be good now 7.5 technical records basically what are the technical records whenever any laboratory whether it's a testing laboratory calibration laboratory when they perform any specific activity so they produce some technical records what these records are these can be the observations these can be the environmental conditions these can be the report so these are and the uncertainty calculation because in 7.6 we will see the uncertainty calculation is very much required particularly in the case of calibration so we will discuss in 7.6 so there are three four kind of uh, records which are uh, comes under the technical category now sufficient information to facilitate if possible identification of factor affecting the measurement result and its associated measurement uncertainty what is the meaning of this there are many factors once you perform testing or calibration there are many factors which are not under your control they will definitely uh, affect your results and they will comes under the uncertainty components so these needs to be uh, evaluated these needs to be identified and these needs to be taken care during the final reporting then repetition of laboratory activity under condition as close as possible to the original the meaning of this is retesting can be there recalibration can be there because in the retesting the same person is performing calibration under the same condition by the same uh, by the same engineer similarly testing it can be performed by the same engineer so that the type of records which require to maintain the quality of the results produced by the laboratory this needs to be maintained then results and report if you see once any laboratory uh, performing any calibration or any testing finally they have to produce the report that report is basically the product of that particular laboratory and it has to be used by the customer which is giving a testing or calibration item to the laboratory now the date and identity of a person responsible for the activity and checking for example some person is performing calibration of vernal caliper and that person who is performing the vernal caliper he has to put date on that particular observation and he has to put his name and then signature then only it will be identified that who has performed this particular activity and on which date then it shall be checked because if a particular person is performing some activity and he is checking himself then he, he might miss, miss something so it is uh, better the work is performed by a particular person has to be checked by the senior or some peer so that the chances of any deviation can be recorded then of, uh, original observation recorded at time they are made and identify with the specific task the meaning of this is for example you are performing a particular calibration then that particular instrument must have a serial number name range and might be it is uh, 
given the job job number so all these th things must be there uh, on the original observation sheet so that it can be identified very easily now the amendments including addition change or deletion tag to the previous version or original observation if we talk about records as it was discussed by uh, sangeeta ma'am that what are the records records are basically the proof of activities and they cannot be changed because records are the history and they are the evidence of uh, a particular activity but in case you have put wrong date you have put wrong method the method which you are using and on base, uh, on on play, in place of 9.99 you have put 99.9 in that case what is required you need to change them or sometime you need to delete uh, those observations or some sometime you forget to add something in that in that case what, you, what is required you have to add for example you miss the job number of that particular item which you are uh, testing or uh, calibrating or you forget to uh, put the range of that particular uh, item then you need to make the amendments and these amendment uh, shall be made in such a way that they must be the original observations will also be there you are not supposed to uh, delete in such a manner that you are not able to see the original observation for example you have written something wrong so it is not required that you uh, are taking the whitener and just uh, um, get it off no you have to just cross it you have to write the actual value and you have to sign over there then only it is acceptable otherwise it is not acceptable then both original original and amended data files shall be kept including date of alteration in which date you have made alteration on a particular record on a particular technical record then indication then indication of altered aspect what can be the aspect of alteration that has to be in the technical record which a laboratory is having then personal responsible for alteration the person who has performed a particular task his name must be there date must be there and it must be identifiable that because of whom the alteration are made so whenever we talk about technical records technical records can be the observation sheet it can be the environmental conditions or there is any communication between the customer and the laboratory because prior to uh, executing the order there are many communications the customer will ask you that we want to get it uh, calibration of this uh, particular sprt and our range is this and our uh, we, we need this kind of uh, uncertainty and uh, these are the various points so there is a two way communication between the laboratory and the customer so this communication which is related to the testing and calibration is also con considered as technical record you have to keep these records also because many a time it had happened that the laboratory is saying that we have asked for calibration as 100 and 200 and you have performed it as 150 and 250 so if you have written communication then you may show many time it had happened or if there is any contact between the laboratory on telephonically that can be recorded in what way that can be recorded you can write it somewhere that this was the uh, this was the inquiry and the customer was asking for this this point so this is also acceptable but whenever you are performing any 
task any calibration any testing it would be better that you must have written communication because customer may say that i have told you 100 you have written 150 so if there is a two way communication written communication that would be better group activity now the important uh, very important class is evaluation of measurement of uncertainty as far as uncertainty is concerned the laboratory is also uncertain about this particular clause because I have seen many times whenever some assessor come to the laboratory, he told you some other points that you have to consider it. However, NABL has made 129 and they have written that these are the uh, points of uh, uncertainty which needs to be uh, taken care of during the measurement. But still, the points are not fixed. It is depend upon the laboratory's work. It is depend upon the capability of the laboratory. A one laboratory is having two micron uncertainty, one laboratory is having 30 micron uncertainty. So their points can be different because whenever you are talking about two micron, the temperature is very, very crucial. However, it is also crucial for 30 micron also. But where the 0.1 micron is negligible in case of 30 micron, it is considerable in case of two micron. So the point, so the various Factors of uncertainty can be different for different type of measurement. Now, but we need to understand the concept. What is the concept of the uncertainty? We need to understand it. So 7.611, laboratory shall identify the contribution of measurement uncertainties. Contribution of measurement uncertainty means there are two types of components. One is random error, another is systematic error. Once you talk about random error, random error is nothing but it comes from the repeatability. And repeatability is based on your equipment. For example, we are, uh, we discuss about the weighing balance. You are performing the calibration of uh, weight. So what you are doing, doing over there? You are taking reading A, B, B, A cycle. You are putting uh, reference, then under test, then again under test, and then reference. So if there is a difference between the readings which you have taken through the balance, your A type uncertainty will be more. Or if these readings are closer, your A type uncertainty will be less. So there are two type of uh, two type of uncertainty components. Number one is type uncertainty which comes from random error number two type b systematic error type uncertainty you can calculate by five reading or ten reading it is up to you if laboratory is uh, taking five reading they can calculate it in case of uh, pressure there are uh, three cycles for example so there are six readings they can calculate type uncertainty type uncertainty is nothing but first uh, you have to uh, calculate the standard deviation and then this standard deviation has to be divided by number of observation. So in this way, you will get type A uncertainty. Now, type, uh, type B uncertainty, type B uncertainty is what? These are basically the systematic error. What are the systematic error? You are using a particular uh, reference standard. For example, in case of mass, you are using a mass. 2 gram mass you are using. So that 2 gram mass is having uncertainty. That has to be taken uh, during the calculation of the uncertainty. Now we come on to the distribution. So usually we use two, uh, two type of distribution, normal distribution and rectangular, rectangular distribution. Normal distribution is basically the dumbbell shell shape and you don't know where value will uh, uh, like there is a line and dumbbell shell uh, shape is having ha half on negative side and half on positive side and the value can be lie anywhere 
and the value which you are getting through the certificate, you cannot calculate it. That has been calculated by the laboratory, which has calibrated your master instrument. In that case, it, it in that case it will be divided by two because the value of k is equal to two. So this is the example of normal distribution. Now you are having a balance. Balance is having a list count. So that list count will be divided by two root three. Why two? Because list count is always taken half, and because you can calculate it. It will be divided by root three. So basically, there are two type of distribution: normal distribution and rectangular distribution. Once you talk about normal distribution, it is divided by k usually, and and you are not able to calculate it. It is given in the certificate. Second is list count of the balance. And you know it. It is point one milligram or point zero one milligram. It is up to you. you. You you know what type of balance you are using. Half and then it is divided by root three. Similarly, if there is any impact on the performance uh, during the time of uh, calibration testing of the temperature, then you can uh, calculate what can be the impact uh, of that particular temperature when we talk about uh, dimension. So if one degree temperature will increase. At one meter, eleven point five micron will increase. So you can calculate easily if you are having the uncertainty of that uh, temperature indicator. Again, because you are able to calculate it, so you have to divide it by root three. Now there is a sensitivity coefficient because final value will come the standard uncertainty into sensitivity coefficient. Sensitivity coefficient will be one if all the Uh, units are same, then it will be one. In case the values are different, then with the help of differentiation or integration, you can find out the sensitivity coefficient. Or sometimes you can find out if uh, at one degree it is uh, this much of uh, weight is increasing, or at this particular volume this much uh, uh, weight is increasing. So what will be the increase at th this particular uh, temperature? so you can calculate if the units are same sensitivity coefficient will be same if units are different sensitivity coefficient has to be calculated once you will calculate the sensitivity coefficient that standard uncertainty needs to be uh, multiply with this and then you will get the final value for example you have get you have got six or seven uncertainty component one is type a component then you have to find out the Combined uncertainty. Combined uncertainty is nothing but square root of type A, then u1, u2, u3, u6, and finally you will get the combined uncertainty. Now you have uh, got type A uncertainty and type B uncertainty, and finally combined uncertainty. Then you have to find the degree of freedom because if your degree of freedom is, it is nothing but uh, C uh, combined uncertainty raised to the power four. And uh, type and uncertainty raised to power four into n minus one. N n minus one means means the number of observation minus one. So if this value is more than thirty, you will take k equal to thirty. If this value is less than thirty, uh, then you have to see the student t table because it will be different for twenty-five, uh, for twenty, for fifteen. And that combined uncertainty will be uh, multiplied with k value. If, um, for example, it is Uh, degree of freedom is two, then it will be two point one. So the um, final expanded uncertainty will be U C into two point one. So you have to take care of all these things. So seven point one, seven point six point one. They are talking about the various contributions. They are also talking uh, talking about sampling, because there are many testing. In calibration, sampling is uh, you can say. it is not required because for each and every instrument you have to perform the calibration but whenever you talk about the drinking water so you have to get sample from the field for example you have to take the uh, sample of road then you have to take the sample similarly that to explain in hindi hindi somewhere you can use mixed language in english 
ओके बट समिंग दट दे आर नॉट एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड हिंदी सो सैम्पलिंग इज वेरी वेरी क्रिटिकल इफ सैम्पलिंग इज नॉट परफॉर्म इन ए राइट वे एज इट वॉर डिस्कस इन सेवन पॉइंट थ्री द रिजल्ट कैन बी डेविएट एंड देर कैन बी ए अनसर्टेंटी ड्यू टू द सैम्पलिंग बिकॉज इफ इट इज मैं दैट यू हैव टू टेक द सैम्पलिंग सैंपल एट फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेस देन फोर्टी डिग्री but if you see in north india right now it is 45 or 46 in that case you have to apply uncertainty what will be the uncertainty in our values at 5 degree so you have to apply that value so sampling is also a dominating factor in the testing where we are getting sample from the field for example soil soil samples water samples coal samples food samples okay and in testing and calibration there are various uh, components which can affect our results they will be considered for uncertainty measurement S sometime you have seen that uh, the laboratory uh, laboratories are failing in uh, pt and ilc why they are failing because they are not able to calculate uh, their uncertainty properly sometime uncertainty is uh, what they are claiming is not actual uncertainty it is more than that and when they calculate their en ratio or z score they fail so uncertainty is really very crucial uh, uh, process it has to be understand it has to be taken care with honesty because sometime laboratory think that if we uh, we have good uncertainty then it will be better always claim the actual uncertainty now 7.6.2 a laboratory performing calibration include of its own equipment shall evaluate measurement uncertainty for all calibration very very simple sometime the laboratory is calibrating their own equipment and they think we don't require uh, to calculate the uncertainty but actually they require because process is same for everyone and this 7.6.2 is clearly saying if you are calibrating your own equipment then you shall measure uh, you shall calculate the measurement of uncertainty of all calibrations now 7.6.3 and one thing which i would like to add over here if you know that we are uh, performing a calibration of, for example one year caliper of uh, 150 mm and every time we are getting uh, uncertainty 12 to 13 micron in that case you might not calculate it but you have to make plan that after every 15 calibration we will uh, calculate uncertainty that is acceptable but that is not acceptable that you will not uh, calculate the uncertainty the laboratory performing uh, testing shall evaluate uh, measurement of uncertainty where is it, it is possible because there are many uh, component which are qualitative in case of qualitative you are not able to calculate the uncertainty but of course if the testing is quantitative then you can calculate uncertainty up to some extent there, there are also some example there is a component which you are breaking and test is in that case you are not able to you know calculate the uncertainty for that particular component which which you have broke so wherever you can calculate uncertainty in the testing you have to but it is really required in the calibration if you are not uh, mentioning uncertainty of the measurement or let's say expanded uncertainty then your results are not acceptable they are incomplete so you can see where the test method precludes rigorous evaluation of measurement uncertainty and estimation shall be made based on the understanding of the theoretical principle or practical experience of the performance of the method so there are two things number one is theoretical which is available but sometime your experience which also comes out during the time of uh, measurement of the uncertainty and note one provide flexibility for testing wherever it is possible you have to calculate the uncertainty applies testing and calibration i have already discussed you that if the similar kind of testing or similar kind of calibration and you are competent enough 
to know that uh, the value will come around this. In that case, you are not need to calculate again and again. But after 10 or 15 test or calibration, you have to calculate it. Now 7.7, .7, ensuring the validity of the results. The results which you are producing for testing and calibration, how you will ensure? Because you have to ensure all the results, all the testing, all the calibrations, that whether they are under the permissible limit, under the accuracy or not. So what methods a laboratory can use? They can use reference materials or quality check materials. What is the meaning of this? Reference materials and quality check materials are those materials which whose values are known to you. For example, a laboratory is using a spectrophotometer and they are performing testing by this spectrophotometer. And how they will come that this particular instrument is uh, uh, performing well or not? With the help of reference material, they will come to know because the value of reference material they know. And if the result of this spectrophotometer are under the permissible limit, it means that the instrument is performing well, it is under control, and the results are acceptable. So the laboratory can use reference materials and quality check materials. The, of course, the values of uh, all these material, materials are known to the laboratory. Then use of alternative instrument. For example, you are using one method to evaluate the, whether this method is working properly or not. You may use alternative method. For example, you are, you are giving 4 to 20 milliampere to a temperature controller and you are getting some value. Now you, ca you calibrate it with, with sensor. Because once you will calibrate it with sensor or we can say it is a loop calibration, you will find some value and you are giving 4 to 20 milliampere or millivolts. You will get the value, compare them. If they are under permissible limit, it means your instrument is working well. Now functional check. What is functional check? If you are having an instrument and your instrument is having a range and list count. So you can easily see what is the list count of the instrument. Once you will own it, you will come to know whether uh, it is um, showing zero or not, whether its list count is um, showing what it is meant for. Because sometime it had happened the list count is 0 0.001, but once you um, use it, it is showing 0 0.01. So you can make functional check of the instruments which we are using for testing and calibration. Use of check or working standard with control charts where applicable. Basically, the meaning of control chart is that you are having a data of that particular working standard or particular instrument. So with the help of that control chart, you can compare the value of that particular instrument. If there is a deviation which is not under the permissible limit, then you may take corrective action. Now the intermediate check on measuring equipments. What is the meaning of intermediate check? The equipment to be checked for its performance with the known value. If it is showing the values with the equipment which we are checking, under the permissible limit, then it is fine. If the values are not under the permissible limit, it means there is something wrong, then we have to take the corrective action. Then replicate test or calibration using the same or different method. Replicate test or calibration means a test is performed by one engineer and after that it is performed by the second engineer. If these results are same, it means the equipment is working properly. And the re replicate calibration testing can be performed by the same instrument or by the different uh, method for different instrument. Then retesting or recalibration of the retained item. Retesting or recalibration means a testing or calibration performed by a same person under the same condition by the same equipment. And again, after some time, it is performed by a same person. So the basic difference between the replicate and retesting is Replicate is done by the two person. There can be a different method. There can be a different instrument. But in retesting, the conditions will be same. Then correlation of results for different characteristics of an item. Correlation means 
you are giving some uh, 4 to 20 milli ampere or some millivolt. So the results are comparable or not? Because when you talk about uh, temperature, temperature indicator, once you will give millivolt DC, it will show temperature. In case of uh, PRT, if you are giving resistance, it will show temperature. So you are having a table. With the help of this table, you will come to know that your instrument is performing under the permissible limit or not. Then review of reported result. As you have issued many reports to, uh, to your customer, in that case, you have to review those uh, reports. Once you will report, might be you will find some mistake. That mistake has to be taken care. The result, uh, the report will call back and maybe calibration can be or testing can be done again. So these, these are the various uh, things which, which ensure the validity of the test and calibration results. Then intralaboratory comparison, intralaboratory intra comparison. Intralaboratory comparison means within the organization, not within the lab. If, for example, SGS is there, or for example, my lab is there, they are having 11 labs in the field of uh, calibration or testing or in some other field. So they are performing a particular kind of testing in all the 11 laboratories. Once they are performing that particular kind of testing or calibration, in all the uh, laboratories, they must be comparable. If we, we talk about uh, testing, the JD score must be under 2, plus minus 2. If we are talking about calibration, it must be within plus minus 1. So inter-laboratory means a similar, a same organization having 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 laboratories and they are performing the testing or calibration within them. That is inter-laboratory. Testing of blind sample. A sample is not known to the calibration engineer or testing engineer, but the value is known to the management. It is given to him. And then you can compare those results which are produced by the calibration engineer. Proficiency testing. Proficiency testing means the laboratory which is aggregated as per 17043. It means they are competent. They can perform uh, PT participation. They are having equipment. Basically, in proficiency testing, the predetermined criteria by the independent party. In, in case of testing, again, Z square will be compared. In, in, in case of calibration, EN ratio will be plus minus 1. Now, interlaboratory comparison other than proficiency testing. Interlaboratory comparison is basically, it is initiated by the laboratory only. Whereas, proficiency testing is not uh, initiated by the um, participating laboratory. It is uh, initiated by the independent uh, accredited laboratory in the field of uh, proficiency testing. And whenever you talk about interlaboratory, it is initiated by the laboratory, which is having the facility for testing or calibration. They will basically calibrate or test that particular item at their end, and it will be distributed to the other laboratories. In case of uh, testing, at least there can be more than three laboratories to uh, find out the JD score. Because if there are if there are only two laboratories, JD score will always be uh, less than one. In the testing, if there are only two laboratories, so it is recommended the laboratories must always be more than two, or it, it will be better if they are three, four, or five. But in case of calibration, there can be two laboratories which can perform ILC, and it has to be performed with the laboratory which is having better CMC in comparison of the participating laboratory or the laboratory which has initiated ILC. So that is the basic difference. Or, and these are the various, these are the various, uh, you know, ways, various methods to ensure your results. And it is not necessarily necessary that all um, shall be performed by the laboratory, because maybe some laboratory not using uh, RM or QC material. For example, a, a laboratory which is performing dimension calibration, they don't require any um, RM or QC material. If some laboratory is performing uh, 
pressure calibration if some uh, laboratory is performing uh, electrotechnical calibration so it depend upon the laboratory or for example uh, only one person is in the laboratory so they are not able to perform replicate testing or calibration because for replicate you need to have more than one person so they will only perform decalibration and in case of uh, proficiency testing for example the laboratory which is providing the proficiency testing facility their uncertainty is poor than the laboratory so that particular pt laboratory is not fit for that purpose similarly in uh, similarly sometime the inter laboratory comparison there is a laboratory which are having uncertainty better than npl because they have purchased the instrument from uh, abroad and once they have purchased that particular instrument from abroad because it is having a very good uncertainty and when, uh, when they calculate the expanded uncertainty it is um, better than the nmi so there are some cases where you are not able to perform the particular kind of uh, qc check method and sometime the proficiency testing to interlaboratory comparison it uh, cannot be performed for the qualitative test so it all depend upon the scope of accreditation and the activity undertaken by the um, laboratory then data from monitoring uh, activity shall be analyzed whatever you are performing whether you are performing uh, retesting recalibration or qc check or anything which you are performing that has to be analyzed for example a recalibration was performed by a same engineer now what will be the criteria that these results are comparable or acceptable it can be the criteria that the results are coming under the uncertainty of the laboratory if they are going beyond the uncertainty of the laboratory it means there is something wrong because uncertainty is having each and everything all all the parameters which can affect your result so you have to set the criteria of acceptability for various kind of methods which are required to ensure the validity of the results then if applicable improve the laboratory activities if you if you are getting that there is something wrong then you can improve your uh, capability you can improve your activities if the result of analysis of data from monitoring activity are found to be outside the predefined criteria appropriate action shall be taken to prevent the incorrect results from being reported if you if you find that you are failing pt participation you, you are failing uh, ilc then what can be done you have to do the root cause analysis if you see there is a measurement audit uh, process in europe if you see in india our assessor used to go to the premises of the laboratory and they used to see each and every um, testing or calibration which is applied by the lab, uh, by the laboratory but in europe what had happened they are having a particular equipment and then they know the value of that particular equipment they know the uncertainty if there is a difference they will increase your uncertainty if there is a difference or if the results are comparable what you have uh, asked what cmc you have asked they will give you otherwise they will increase they will increase your uh, bits of uncertainty so this is uh, one of the best method and if you you are able to perform uh, calibration at 100 degree you can perform at 0 degree and 1000 degree but you must have the equipment you must have the traceability so these are the things which can be used to ensure the validity of the results okay sir thank you very much Thank you very much, sir, for your nice uh, presentation and uh, explanation of all these complicated clauses to our uh, to our participants. And certainly, we will be having a lot of uh, other things which we will discuss tomorrow. We are also getting some questions uh, in this uh, uh, chat box. We will discuss it uh, either in the uh, immediate after this or uh, tomorrow when we will be having the complete panel to discuss the questions that uh, given in the chat box. In the meantime, sir, uh, so basic. Uh, Sir, uh, Mr. Gattel, presentation was very nice. Thank you, sir. Particularly on the on the on the issue of uh, uh, uncertainty measurement. So his uh, uh, presentation may be low down.
somewhere jo hai and uh, he may be requested to give more lecture on the measurement of uncertainty uh, during uh, our next program jo yes no so so we should give thanks to mr butter that he is participating along with us okay jo thank you thank you very much thank sir you. Uh, sir we will uh, certainly uh, we will share all these presentations whatsoever are being done during these days to all the participants we have uh, we have large number of participants online offline available, online available with us and uh, we will share uh, share all these uh, presentations as well at the same time sir we are also uh, to, uh, we are also having tomorrow the session for this explanation part tomorrow uh, what i am thinking uh, we can start uh, because i don't know whether it will be too long lengthy or not because uh, on online it may be difficult to stay for uh, many hours on the computer screen or on your mobile so uh, tomorrow as uh, uh, professor anil kumar sir has asked to take some more time for about one and a half hour i would like to request all the participants to kindly reach by 11 by 10:30 so that we can start our program tomorrow at 10:30 from 10:30 to 12 we will be having the uh, professor anil kumar sir who will be explaining about class 7.8 7.9 and 6.5 So then we will be having other classes accordingly from 12 to 1 and then 2 to 2:15 with the question answer session and the closing session. Now, see if we just go to recoup what we have discussed today. What uh, actually uh, we have just discussed. If we go through it from this uh, part of uh, Shri uh, Butter Singh Sahab, we have just uh, seen he has explained the handling of test or calibration items, how to handle. when we are receiving a calibration item or a test item how we can handle it or how we will be handling transportation received protection storage retention and disposal or return of test or calibration item including all provisions the laboratory has to ensure and make a plan we should have laboratory should have a plan for or a, uh, and a procedure for all these activities which have to be performed for handling of test or calibration items similarly it has to ensure that the requirement of the standard or the integrity of the test or calibration calibration item has to be maintained and to protect the interest of the laboratory and the customer requirements similarly we have to see the laboratory has a precaution laboratory should have a lab laboratory should have the precautions to avoid deterioration contamination loss or damage to the item during the transportation and the storage etc these are the things which we have discussed or mr patel singh has discussed about the handling part we should be very careful because many times when we are going at site for the calibration or the testing of the purpose or when we are receiving the calibration of the test items it has to be ensured that the requirement of the standard can be maintained similarly the item or the calibration item can be uh, protected from any type of ambiguity similarly laboratory should have a system for an unambiguous identification of test or calibration items as far as uh, i have seen during my large assessment experience i have seen that the laboratories are maintaining whatsoever the item they are getting they used to have immediately after receiving it they used to mention they used to put a label over it so that there should not be any mixing or any type of uh, here and there so that the, the the item can be protected from any damage similarly whenever we are the laboratories are receiving any test or calibration items they have to see whether the item is as per the standard as per the requirement or not and if there is any deviation in the sample it has to be recorded informed to the customer that the results may not be as required by the law as required by the customer or as required by the standard or as per the requirement similarly when we need the item needs to be stored or con, uh, or conditioned the environmental conditions have to be maintained monitored and recorded it is very clear even after we have seen that during the experiment during the testing and the calibration we record all these environmental conditions so all these things are basically given for safe and control handling of test or the calibration items 
then he has, Bhattan Singh Sahib has discussed about the technical records, how we have to do, laboratory has to ensure that technical records for each laboratory activity contain the results, report and sufficient information to facilitate as close as possible to be original. We have, we are obviously aware of that, that whenever we are making any of the calcul calibration or any of the observation, we used to have the calculation sheet or the observation sheets and keep it as our records in the original. So it is also the requirement of the standard that these documents should be kept in original. Similarly, whenever there is an amendment to the technical records, it should be, it should be trackable. What, what, what is being done? What, what was the original results? What are the amendments? How the amendments and the original results are interrelated to each other? And all these things to be recorded or kept in original. Then we have discussed a very good explanation and the discussion of measurement uncertainty. Yes, it's a very interesting and a good subject about the measurement uncertainty. We used to use the gum book and everybody uh, in the scientific field or the technical field and the laboratories field they all are aware about the gum document even after. So in these two days, immediately after these two days, maybe within two, three next weeks, uh, we will be having a complete program for the measurement of uncertainty. What are the parameters? How to find, how to calculate the uncertainty? What are the parameters? What are the coefficient factors? All these things we will discuss very soon. We will be having a separate session of one day for one item, maybe one day for mass balance, one day for volume, one day for pressure, one day for thermal and load cell, etc. So these items will continue for one day for one and a half or two or three hours in a day for each and every uh, each and every explanation uh, which, uh, for the measurement and sanitary uncertainty as we are all aware see calculation of an uncertainty from an excel sheet may be very easy but what is behind the science we have to understand that and certainly very soon we will do that and we will be having expecting last we will be expecting all see being government of india all the programs, my department, my officers are telling me that we have to train our officers. We have to build a capacity in the country and we are all making all these programs free of cost. If somebody wants to join offline in the laboratory, in the office at Ahmedabad, he's most welcome. Here she's most welcome. Otherwise, online and all programs are free of cost. We are not charging anything. We will continue these programs so that after six months or three months, we will be having our you know, next generation is good enough to understand the requirement of uh, this uh, these uh, technical or the standards requirements. Certainly, we will share all these part uh, PPTs. Um, whatsoever we are discussing, maybe today, whatsoever we have done today, we will share, and otherwise tomorrow we will share all in one or two uh, PPTs so that you can understand what we have discussed. But I would like to tell you, my dear friends, whatsoever is being discussed today, it is taken from the standard only. All the statements given from the standard. We are not telling anything from our own except from our own experiences or the examples which are experts from having last experience, Professor Anil Kumar, maybe 40 years, Professor Kotnala, maybe 45 years. So we are having all these experiences and we are trying to help the, uh, help the laboratories how to do it. We just, and then uh, our Dr. Singh Saab has discussed about the ensuring the validity of results, how to validate, how to ensure the results. He has discussed about all these. So these are the, the things which we have discussed, discussed since morning. Structural requirements we have discussed. Prof Professor Anil Kumar Sahib has discussed. I already told you legal identity, identifying the measure, identifying find the management, defining and documenting the range of laboratory activities, and what are the requirements laboratory shall carry out to meet the requirements of the document and the requirement of the customers. And laboratory shall define the organization and management structure, specify the responsibility, documents, etc. So these are the requirements of the structural requirements which we have already discussed then we have discussed about the resource requirements under the resource requirements we have discussed about the personnel how the personnel all the personals may be either internal or external हम लोग लैब के अंदर भी हो सकते हैं और लैब के बाहर से भी लोगों को ले सकते हैं ये सारे के सारे जो लोग इंटरनल एंड एक्सटर्नल होंगे who so ever can influence the laboratory activities shall act impartially I think we all or understand we are all understanding about this impartiality and the confidentiality which we needed so these are the small these are the two three things which we have discussed in the morning about the personal requirements the laboratory uh, what are the requirements of the laboratory to come the, the laboratory has to document the competence requirements means whenever you are having this standard requirement you are making any standard quality manual quality process
procedure you are making all these document parts and laboratory shall ensure that the personnel have the competencies yes we are so ensure it laboratory management of the laboratory shall communicate to pers the personnel to their duties responsibility and authorities obviously in all the laboratories we are having a structural chart what are the responsibilities power and duties of an individual it has it, these are very clear to each and everybody laboratory have the procedure and retained course for determination of competence how competence will be determined selection of personnel because in you you know whenever we are selecting the personnel maybe through interview maybe through written examination we have all procedures and the uh, and also retain the records we also do the training regular training programs are being organized by the laboratory people supervision of personnel we used to supervise our personnel whether it is correct or not regularly authorization we used to change increase decrease the authorization we also monitor competence of the personnels that how the personnel whether the personal competencies are continued or increase or decrease similarly laboratory also authorize personnel to perform specific laboratory activities including development modification verification and validation of methods this is this is very important activity when we are performing in a laboratory how a method or what method will be used for calibration or testing of a particular item analysis of results report review and authorization of results then we have we have discussed in the morning facilities and environmental conditions we have discussed in the morning about the equipment i have seen that whenever we are doing the calibration and the, the testing part what are the requirement standards or requirement equipments whether these equipments are actually competent competent to give you the entire give you the desired results for example if you are doing the calibration of weighing balances whether the weights which are required to calibrate a balance are sufficient having the, the necessary uncertainty as far as let's say we are doing suppose air of ultra micro balance whether the weights are of even class accuracy or the uncertainty is of the level of that accuracy so that we can say or we can calibrate a balance so these are the requirement of the equipments i have seen that many times we don't fight all these things and we used to approve we used to ask the laboratories to kindly uh, kindly change the uncertainty or kindly change the increase or enhance the uncertainty otherwise this may not fall similarly these all all these things we discussed and the very important part about the traceability we are all aware i would like to tell you under the legal methodology we have a very very strong chain of traceability from the international prototype to the rates and measures used at the traders level we used to get it calibrated from international prototype uh, from the uh, bipm paris then it goes to national physical laboratory and pl then we comes to the regional reference standards laboratories and then from regional reference standards laboratories this traceability goes to the state levels laboratories and then from state level to the traders and the transaction uh, transaction level so this is a complete traceability within that uh, within the race of traceability we have this methodological traceability which we are maintaining similarly we have discussed about the externally provided products and uh, services how we are using what what are the conditions of externally provided products and services maybe we are using uh, external provided products maybe we are simply getting the complete report and giving it to the, our customer and we have an agreement with the customer that we will give you we will do the we will get the calibration and the testing done from another accredited laboratory and will provide you the results similarly we may be using the laboratory we are intended for incorporation into our own laboratory activities it they are provided in part or in full directly to the customer by the laboratory as received from the external provider or are used to support the operation of the laboratory so these are the external pro externally provided products and services which we use for our lab which we use in our laboratory similarly laboratory have a procedure and retained records for all this laboratory also communicate its requirements to the external providers what are the requirements of the laboratory for the testing and the calibration purposes similarly we have also discussed already in the uh, today about the process requirements review of request tenders and contracts how we will be having what will be the procedure and how the procedure has to be honored when we are making any type of request tenders and contracts we have discussed it in detail so all these things what we have discussed today are basically but few of them which we will continue tomorrow and uh, with this i would think that uh, we can close this session today and we will be uh, meeting tomorrow morning at around uh, tomorrow at around 10 30 10 30 in the morning and if you require 
tomorrow afternoon till the time you will be having the questions we will not close the session we will continue till you will be having the questions thank you very much with this i close this session today tomorrow tomorrow morning at 10 30 we are meeting thank you very much to my guest of honors my chief guest and my experts in the field whether from india and outside of india thank you very much all of you thank you very much thank you guys